Welcome back, everybody, to the Retro Handhelds podcast, your last week uh, for handheld news and stories from around the emulation scene. I'm your host, Stubbs, joined once again by my co-host, Rob, the Retro Tech Daddy, Hi guys. Aish, Hi everybody. and our special guest, once again, returning our friend Russ from Retro Game Core. Russ, how you doing, Hey, everybody. Man? Good, good. Well, we are hanging out. It is a uh, nice, sunny April 1st, uh, April Fool's to many in the West. And I don't know about you guys, but I've been seeing just some wild stuff show up. I got I got bamboozled by one from JSAW. They're making this crazy <laughs> AI. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. One that I look on that one. Yeah, I, for sure. They got to be good on that one. <laughs> it was good. Do you guys fall for any any uh, good April Fool's gags today? Uh, Bob Wolf yeah. got me for a second. I I, I was do? like, wow. I was like. He got a he he got a copyright strike or a claim from uh, YouTube. Well, I thought for, that was real. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was real. Uh, you can't trust anything <laughs> anybody says today. You can't trust anything. I saw ETA's video on the the Galaxy handheld, and yeah. it was really early in the morning. And I looked, I was like, "What is he talking about? What is this?" No, and it like, took me like two to five like, minutes to realize. Wait, it's it's April Fools. I haven't heard about this. This is craziness. Oh yeah. Yeah, Tech Tweeb had a good TV. one. Yeah, he oh, had yeah, a good one. Tech yeah. Tweeds. Tech Tweeds yeah. was the best. Yeah, that Steam was OS. Steam OS running in the Mew Mini. Yeah, it took me a while to figure out how he pulled that off, but he was just <laughs> using a video player. And oh, he was just the... playing a video of Steam running on the Mew Mini, like through like Incredible. an MP4 file. Because you can see Incredible. like when he's pushing inputs, it's not the same. And so yeah. it took me a minute. I'm like, ah, that's what it is. He's just running a video. But I was like, yeah, how did he get that to work? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is there was... Moonlight for the mini? No. Okay. So he's yeah, it's just an MP4 yeah. player. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah, I thought it was just like it was Moonlight a funny or trick. Like no, it was yeah. it was it was good. And then Shem, was, Shem did yeah. one with uh, a watermelon. <laughs> he reviewed a watermelon. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Team Retro did a good one too. <laughs> oh, his was great. Yeah, it was, that was good too. Yeah, that was yeah. that was actually the first one I watched this morning. All of these mm -hmm. content creators just pulling the wool over our eyes, and I'm I'm getting yeah. Besides Shem's, Shem's I knew was a was a trick. Uh, since he was reviewing <laughs> yeah. a watermelon, although I reviewed a toast, I, I don't know. Before, so I don't know. I where am I? Who am I to judge? I think exactly. Shem was being pretty serious about that. Though. I think those are <laughs> those are real feelings. <laughs> it was yeah. The one that, the one that got me and I just didn't appreciate was the Bodicera one. So they, I don't know if you guys know the whole story, but like basically mm. way before April first, like obviously yeah. they're in Europe, so they're a little bit ahead in time zone as well. But even before then. They had put a bunch of commits on their GitHub saying they were going to remove every Nintendo system from Bodicera yeah. and introduce a code that would remove it from everybody's as soon as they booted up, basically. And then also in their Discord, in their development chat, the developers were chatting about how they were going to do it and stuff and like the yeah. nuts and bolts of it, you know. And I and I saw comments and stuff on their GitHub and I was like, oh my gosh, this might be real. This is a lot of work, you know. <laughs> so I actually like <laughs> took the night off last night and updated mm -hmm. all of my Botasera computers. So I had to like run around. I had to drive oh, back to the no. studio last night to uh, like the one that's running here in the background. That's running Botasera. Mm -hmm. I had to update that just to make sure I had the latest version before they took it away. So I lost hours of my life before I kind of figured out that it was actually a joke. Uh, so I, I was supposed to work on a video last night and I didn't. So it's all good. <laughs> they got you good. <laughs> they, got you, they got me pretty dang good. Yeah. yeah, I I definitely thought that was serious too when I first read it. I mean, just given the situations that have been going on for the past few weeks, I mean, it was probably not in the best taste. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I and that's why it's so perfect. Yeah, right. Yeah. Some of them are just mean. I mean, I mean, yes, mean that's a mean one. That's mean super mean. Is the original point of April Fools? One of our patrons, Michael Benny, uh, one of our mods as well, uh, mentioned today that his kid came up and just punched him in the face and said, "April Fools." <laughs> <laughs> like maybe that was the original spirit. Of April Fools. Maybe we got away from that. Maybe we got away from the true part of it because I saw like. Uh, JSAW or a few other brands were posting crazy sales like 50% off. God, I forgot what it was now. 50% off your, um, <laughs> I don't know, your your fancy handheld. And you click on the page and it's literally a Rickroll saying, ha ha, got mm. you, April Fool's. Nice. I'm like, I would have bought that for that price. This <laughs> is crap. You know, don't don't mess, never mess with the, with someone's money like that. That's the funniest it's... part is that last <laughs> year, April Fools, the ROG Ally was announced. Yeah, and it, we were great. all like, "What the heck so, is this real or whatever?" You know, and yeah, it was. 
<laughs> because that one thing happened to be true this year it's like everything's fine tooth comb is it or right. is it not an april fool's day because today we have a few announcements mm -hmm. of new handhelds that were oh, announced yeah. today and so it's like is that really real because now i'm all suspicious so we'll, we'll we'll get into it today and we're also going to be discussing our favorite clamshell devices so you know strap in uh and let's chitty chat chat uh let's get into the news so the Ambernix, Ambernic company that uh, we have all come and know <laughs> and love is once again at it. It's been a whole two weeks and they're coming out with another one. Actually, it's only been a, a one week now. Uh, this is called the RG35XX SP. And this is reminiscent of a Game Boy Advance with the guts of a 35XX Plus and H. So it has the H700 chip. And we have a four second clip from uh, Juntaro. Gamebu Jintaro on Twitter here showing that uh, it has neat light up lights. Russ, how do you feel about this? Are you excited about the lights? <laughs> oh. It's so tacky, man. Like I, I just, it is. It's so like '90s gamery. Like what is that? Like the, it looks like the the headpiece of Beautiful <laughs> Joe. You know what I mean? Like I don't need that yeah. on my handheld. Like I want to open it up and be like, hey, not only am I gaming, uh, but I'm gaming. You know, like don't right. Do that. That look, that yeah, lid is don't... awful. That the, yeah, the yeah. lifted logo on that thing is just why? Are you, are you why telling that... me that you don't want to have just the latest, greatest gamer gear chroma on everything? <laughs> no, I, the thing okay. is, like, I wish you know, a lot of people like they'll buy MacBooks and they don't want to have the Apple logo, so they'll put a sticker on it and it'll be illuminated. I think that's totally cool, but I don't think with that shape you can do that. Like, I'd love to put a sticker on there and have it illuminated like Retro Game yeah. Core or whatever, but not that in that cool. kind of angle. So. <laughs> I mean, that has to be just, hopefully it's not the final design. Yeah. That's probably going to be the final design. <laughs> Think about it. It's competing with it's the, the Pow Kitty V90 at this point. So It looks Joey, like a Pow Kitty. Yeah. 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 Joey says, Russ doesn't like fun confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Oh, there, there had to be something wrong with it. It was looking way too promising, and it actually got me excited. I was like, oh, this is going to look like Game Boy Matt's SP. This is awesome. And then I saw the light-up logo. I was like, why? Why did you... Why did you have to do no. that? You could have just called like, oh, yeah. so cool. Yeah. And it's also lifted. It's lifted above above. It's like hey, I mean, I'm happy that there's no sticks. It's it's nice to have yeah, that option. That's, so it's gonna set yeah. itself apart and and no, I'm I'm okay with it not having sticks. I don't think it really needs it given what we know about the, the chipset. I don't think there's any purpose to having it there. It's gonna be see. uh see, I would love a stick. Like just one, just give me one, one so I can play like Nintendo 64 because it runs fairly true. well on that chipset. I just want to play Mario 64 with an analog stick as opposed to a D-pad on maybe a clamshell. A, maybe awesome. a stick right in the middle, like a Cyclops. Yeah, or, just or, or you could just play Mario 64 DS. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could. It's true. Yeah, that is and it's true. nice. It's nice we're getting the same unified chipset on the H700, so we have day one firmware most likely. Uh, which maybe now makes a little more sense mm -hmm. why we got the 2024, which we'll talk about in a minute. But um, I mean, clamshells are hot this year. They're, people are getting crazy for clams. They're just, yeah, yeah. Miu, Ambernick, uh, SZ Dyer, a lot of uh, mod projects for the original Game Boy SP are becoming popular, uh, Game Boy Advance SP. I and like good. Sorry. No, no. Well, I mean, I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Yeah. It's the V90. It's the year of the V90. Yep. Plus. Plus. What are you gonna say? <clears throat> oh, I was just gonna say. I feel like they've been working on this one for a while. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. when they redid the 35xx plus with that operating system and all the updates they were doing. As bad as they managed the updates, they were still trying to update it a lot more than what I've seen from a lot of their other stuff. And then yeah. we saw the age. It was like, okay, we're definitely going to see like their usual three <laughs> devices per chip thing. And so it's cool that we're getting finally getting a flip from Amberneck. I'm just I'm a little bit worried about some things because I feel like they're going to do clicky shoulder buttons, which is going to kind of kill it for me. And the big light up logo on the front is kind of a turn off. So I was really excited for this one, but now I'm kind of I have my reservations. Ish, you can just open up the shell disconnect that light put an rh <laughs> logo on it call it a day we're good it's still well, I, I saw cadence was saying uh we could disable the led but we don't do we know for sure that that's a feature because they might have just forgotten that part it's the main feature 
besides it being a clamshell, people get excited for lights. You know this. And Come magnets. On. I know. No, I don't know, guys. I it's it's a silly design to have the lights. It would have been perfect if they mm -hmm. just left it blank. Um, but I'm always up for more clamshells, and so yeah. we'll see what uh, what comes. We really don't know anything else yet, unless Russ, you heard any rumblings today? Nothing. Yeah, the only oh. thing you know, someone brought up in the chat is I hope it has some sort of sleep function when you close it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Let's I get that so. satisfying kind of snap. Oh situation you guys think about that snap what that's gonna feel like uh, have have they ever been able to like really nail sleep the, the sleep function on linux ambernick uh, not, not in general but just ambernick not ambernick no i, yeah, I can't think okay. of any you know like uh, you know the sleep works in like botasera for this mm -hmm. chipset menu i yeah. does so there are there's definitely going to be ways the community can fix it but it all is going to come down to do you have to hit sleep first and then put the hinge down or is it going to do it when you put it in all that's um, really going to be yeah. like dependent on the user experience we need to know about the hinge situation because you know you oh, can you have just a, you, can, wow. you have a handful of clams right there and uh, you can just carry these around in your pockets get some nice big cargo shorts and man, you're going to have just the best time all day long. So and these will be half the size of this. Look how big these ones are. Mm -hmm. I'm not super worried about that specific hinge design because it looks like they basically just copied the Game Boy Advance SP's design with the other ones like the flip or a lot of the ones you showed there. They're more of that 3DS design of a hinge. So that can be a lot trickier than what it looks like they're doing. But yeah. of course, I wouldn't put it past like some manufacturing issues, but I'm, that's not super worried about that one. I'm not I'm not worried. either. I'm not going to be worried yet until we see it when the 2024 mm -hmm. showed up, which let's just talk about that real quick. The uh, the Ambernick RG 35 XX plus with the plus symbol 2024 edition. Revamp. Yeah, this showed up, and Zoo put out a video, and then Russ put out his review, and I finally started using it, and I realized very quickly that uh, I'm not going to be making a standalone video for this. This is the same as the Plus with a smaller battery, no Wi-Fi. It does have these cool black buttons, though. I want to call that out. I think that's yeah. neat. But otherwise, it just runs your usual custom firmware for the, for the Plus and the H, and here's the big miss is that th these darn shoulder buttons on the back are from the original. So you got the original shell and Russ's video pretty much summed it up saying, just pick up the original three, five XX, get it for cheap, 20, 30 bucks or whatever. And, um, that's going to be way better with garlic 1.0 than getting this situation. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking about, you know, even when I made the video, I, I kind of talked about like how I thought they came to this place. And I thought, well, they probably, I, I actually kind of remember hearing some grumblings that they were running out of chips for the original three, five XX. And so they oh. needed to upgrade. And so okay. that's what the reason for the plus was. But now that I'm thinking about it more, I'm thinking maybe in the interim, they were making a plus and it had the upgraded chip and then everything was the same. And that's why they have the plus symbol on it. But then later on, they're like, oh, well, let's also update the shoulder buttons and give it Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then they release the actual plus. And so now they've got all those other extra shells and they're trying to get rid of them with that upgraded chipset. That's the only drama like that I can think of the story unfolding that makes sense from their perspective. From our right. perspective, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, why are you giving us this downgrade here and trying to like, you know, just shove it off on us and say, oh, you won't you won't figure out the difference. Yeah, I think for, if they came in yeah. with a very competitive price point right out the bat, you know, that would probably would have been nice to see. But what's the point? I mean, the plus you can get it for the same price pretty much all year round at this point. I mean, and even right. cheaper in some cases. And then obviously there's the leftover stock of the original one that came out. And that one's really cheap. That's a really good value if you want some solid custom firmware. So, yeah, I feel like this didn't need to happen. I think this is a release that really didn't need to happen. We might see a price drop on this after a couple of weeks or once, like the stock for the original one yeah. dries up. Uh, yeah. They might just be seriously trying to get rid of it. I, I'd be surprised yeah. if uh, they weren't working with some of the resellers to kind of move all that stuff out because it is pretty weird that this happened. But it also does make sense that they're trying to kind of unify everything with the same chip. Like yeah. one thing I do like about this is when you turn it on, you can see that they've they've continued to put work into the firmware. 
because it's at least this one feels a little bit smoother and it looks better than what we got for the plus and for the h originally and i don't really trust our embernix updating process so it's nice that they are shipping with that and you don't have to go around and track down right. six yeah. different zip files to like kind of put it together in 70 gigabytes you know that's kind of annoying yeah and i actually tested a couple of the custom firmwares that were designed mm -hmm. for the the plus and the h and you know i have i've been ui right now on mine and it, it works Let's fine see. you know they all they all work great but Let's see yours yeah Rob. yeah here this i actually this is the, this is the purple oh, one purple yeah this is the purple um, one i actually got the I'm jealous transparent black one as well they they sent me two for some reason i don't know two. why so i'll one probably give away the other one on the channel at some point so just what, what, what about one for a uh, retro tech mom I mean, I have two other RG thirty five X's. Okay, Jeez, that. Your I, that. I got the LG and the Plus. I mean, all how right, many no. of these things do I need? Dude, I don't know how many you need. I almost, I almost jumped on that bandwagon to get the remaining stock for, that was on sale the other day, yeah. like the original. Yeah, I know. I'm like, wait a minute, what am I doing? I have three or four crazy. of these already. Seriously, yeah. what was like thirty two dollars for the original? Yeah, that was yeah. that was amazing. That's a really mm -hmm. solid price. Yeah, that that's is. that's like the one of the best deals of the year so far i think honestly it's it, crazy it just blows my mind that they didn't make any other changes besides maybe a logo change in the stock firmware and the d-pad my mind is telling me is a little bit better but i don't i think that's just in my mind yeah i think the face buttons are a little bit stiffer at least on my unit i mean it's it's not bad it's just it feels a little bit stiffer but well you need to wear it in right because mm -hmm. you're probably used to yours yeah. you've used plenty by now yeah i think that's what it is but the d-pad uh, is great it feels solid i mean the you know the build quality for for what you're getting here for the price point we keep forgetting i mean this is amazing for 50 bucks you know even mm -hmm. if you look at the plus model or this model this is mm -hmm. still incredible for what well, you're getting at this price point yeah and the price of this bad boy came in at um what was it uh, 62 dollars after shipping and so that's just right there in the plus and the h pricing so just get that yeah. instead at that at that point mm -hmm. or a me mini but yeah, it's just, it's such a hard recommend. Once we see a price deal go on it, some sort of discount, maybe on TikTok or whatever, that's going to be way better around 20, 30 bucks. But as it stands, um, I don't know, man. There's there's definitely a slight difference on the D-pad and buttons because I'm holding both of them right now. So this is my original one with the better buttons mod. And this is the the new one. The D-pad does, does feel a little bit different. I kind of like the new one a little bit better. But the buttons have less travel, which I like the older ones better in that case. But yeah, there's other than that, that's pretty much it. They look yeah. exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yet, you know what's crazy is that, and people are going to call me an Amber Nickshill again for saying this. Um, while this is pointless, doesn't make any sense. I always appreciate just how damn high quality these still feel. Yeah, <laughs> I know it doesn't make any sense, but it still it feels really does, yeah good in the hands and if i put the price out of my mind and i'm just coming at this as just a device whatever the price is uh then it i mean i'm still happy with it i'm still happy with my original 35xx today i know once i get into software that i'm going to want garlic 1.0 i'm only playing up to ps1 anyways most of the time on these verticals and so uh you know what i don't know the price just needs to come down so. Yeah, it's one of those where if this was just released in a vacuum and yeah. you know, I have someone who didn't know any knowledge about any of this stuff and I just grabbed one of these ones, the new one, 2024, I'd be like, this is an amazing deal for $60, but we don't work in a vacuum, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. Amrita created their own problem by ha also having these other handhelds out there. And so it's just, it's so weird, you know, I, I, I do, I think it's a good product. All of the buttons work and everything else. It can run games. The OS honestly is super functional. It'll it'll work just yeah. fine. Um, but man, it's just, the, I'd rather use the plus. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, it's it's like the MSI you know? claw. It, if it existed in its own vacuum, it'd be a great Windows handle, except sure. that we have like 30 other Windows handles. <laughs> right. <laughs> MSI taking shots out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> No, but the plus really does feel a lot better. It looks better, at least in my opinion. Like mm -hmm. when you're holding both of them, the shell feels yeah. better. The quality, just in general, it just feels like there was a lot more work put into this. The weird thing is, they're about the same price. So yeah. that's the Cheaper. part that doesn't make any yeah. sense for me. Yeah, 
I was able to get like the same day I made my video, the cheapest I could find the 2024 was $62. The mm -hmm. cheapest I could find the plus was 56. I'm like, why wouldn't I save $6 and get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and better shoulder yeah. buttons? Like it doesn't make any sense. Right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And Russ, I saw your claw video today, by the way, mm. I enjoyed the, uh, the emulation showcase. But yeah, it's one of those where, life? yeah, that's the thing is like, you know, Rob did such a good, uh, you know, work on his two videos that he made and I plugged them in my video. Uh, I was like, I got home from Japan. I was like, I don't need to make a video that says how bad it is right now because Rob did it mm -hmm. and Fox did it. And we all know how bad it is. <laughs> Let's right. give it two weeks and Poor then Fox. talk about how bad it is. But then also like <laughs> can if it do? the software fix it. You know what I mean? Because that's the biggest thing for me is like, I want to see, mm -hmm. I'm just curious, does the software going to fix it? So let's wait, and then I'm going to have another point of data that nobody else has in terms of, yes, it's just as bad as it was before, or maybe it's a little bit better. Uh, a lot of people interpreted yeah. that as me being like soft on MSI, like I was trying to give them a pass and like, like, like I was being paid by them or whatever, all that stuff. It's like, no, I want to make a more informed opinion. And that yeah, takes a little right. bit of time. I do that with all my handhelds. You know, I'll do an impressions video, then I'll well, wait until I'm like, okay, now it's time to review. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you're you're known, of course, as the big shill of the group. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, it's rolling in my money. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I saw that talk, that comment on your on your three five XX twenty twenty four, and you broke down the math of why oh, yeah. it wouldn't make sense to be shilling. Uh, it, relating it, the person was relating it to <laughs> I your, love that comment, by the way, your uh, what yeah. was it the the promo sale? And it's yeah, because like, I had like released the sale the same day as the right. release the video, and they're like, "Oh, it's because you're trying to make more money off those sales." And I was like, "Listen, dude, if I sell out of that inventory <laughs> and getting my three percent or whatever, I right. would be paid for the amount of work I did in the video to like make a biased video. It would have been what did I come up with? Four dollars and seventy cents an hour." The Something work. like that, the same amount that you yeah. made at Burger King in 1996. Right. When I was 16, I made yeah. $4.90 an hour like <laughs> flipping burgers. Like, why would I right. want to go back to that? And I also like reduce my credibility and all that stuff. It's just funny. I so, mean, I yeah, love it, it when people say that. It's, it's, it's funny. It, it, yeah, as content creators, you just something you put up with. You know, mm -hmm. it's like affiliate sales never drive the entire the entire thing but it it's a little piece that does help of course but yeah like you were saying it's not like what are we doing here you know yeah. right you're here mainly for to show what you're talking about and you have the passion and it's enough to carry you through um this is not again i said this last episode this is not the niche to get into if you're like i'm gonna i'm gonna clean up around here you <laughs> oh know? yeah right <laughs> i'm amber bills man Oh, it's Am it's Amber funny because you, you, know, you can make a 30 minute video <laughs> where you point out every single issue with a with a, a device talk about the shortcomings of it how it mm. could be better but if at the end you say that as a whole you still enjoyed the experience you're a shill like they'll yeah. people will ignore that's everything the funny else thing you is like, out yeah even though i'm i was harsher than usual with the msi claw i actually enjoy things about the device and i do hope we can see it improve on the software side i do mm -hmm. hope that we see those drivers give us that performance boost that we want to see that we've seen on the desktop gpus from intel so you know it's yeah. it's kind of those weird mm -hmm. things where everybody just wants to hate on it but there actually are some decent things about that handheld that just again price is probably the one thing that really killed it more than anything yeah. here so absolutely just, yeah yeah, I'd love for the claw to win, like to to just like to get a win, you know, and it has yeah. nothing to do with MSI or anything else. But it's like exactly. the more that things get for, pushed forward, then that means mm -hmm. that everything else will move forward as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The Steam Deck wins, which is a win for everybody because now everybody yeah. tries to compete with it. And so, yeah, I want to see that kind of stuff. I don't want to see MSI giving up and like not making another handheld because mm -hmm. they screwed up the first time around. Let, let's let's see how far it can go. You know, that's what yeah, I was thinking Competition is a good thing. We, we, we want to encourage that. We want more people coming into the space that are actually doing a good job or a great job. And that's what we want to see because it just helps drive down prices. It pushes the technology forward. And that's definitely something that we do want to see just in general. So mm -hmm. and it also helps uh, devs start to optimize for different um, GPUs more like the I feel like one of the only reasons we're getting so much love for AMD is because of the Steam Deck and how much of a push AMD is actually made into graphics and becoming like an, an actual viable option for people instead of just having to go directly to Nvidia. If you get the same thing from Intel, that just means like there's going to be more incentive for more devs to optimize their games for in um, Intel GPUs too. 
So that's, I think that's awesome. I really hope they do well. But yeah, you have to point out like, hey, they, this was good first effort, but there's a lot of work to be done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Joy. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. That... <laughs> so, Amber, Nick, I do. I'm looking forward to the whatever the clamshell ends up being. I get that this was probably just a financial choice to release this. I, I suppose why send it to the content creators at all in, in that sense? You know, it's sort of like we could have made a, a post about this. Um, but agree with that. beyond that, I mean, the 406 is, an, is another one. And so I'd like to space out these releases a bit more personally. Well, I was Maybe joking about it because I, I got my 556 a little bit later. Joey and I got ours a little bit later. And I'm still, you know, messing around with it, thinking about things, what I want to do with it. And then this shows up. And I'm like, I haven't <laughs> even done anything with the 556 yet. I mean, just come on, space it out a little bit. Slow it down. It's it's too much. They, they've really got to space their releases. I think it was just, one worth, you know, sure, making a new SKU. It's fine. But, um, you know, you can just do a social post say hey we have this here we go you can buy it if you want yeah um but it but uh sort of branding it as the whole own channel it's a whole own entity and then making a bunch of content on it i just i don't get it i really don't but all good let's move on so back to clamshells because this is the clamshell episode okay it's the year of the clamshell we keep saying <laughs> this we're talking about clams and there is a something caught my eye the other day bob wolf on twitter had something that looked like a play date but also was a game boy advance and it turns out i learned about this just recently it's called the gotcha sp and so it's a game boy advance sp made into a vertical handheld much like the form factor of the 280v the play date and it is so quaint looking it has an ips screen uh, you do have to purchase, you know, the PCB. You're going to be soldering on button contacts. You're going to be getting a, um, you need a back shell housing from the original GBA SP and the motherboard. And the whole kit altogether is going to cost you around $100 if you already have a spare SP lying around, or about $200 ish uh, if you don't. And you need to source everything. So if yeah. you're interested, check in our description. The whole kit is in there. You can go to PCB Way. And our buddy Jonas from RetroGame.Evo helped with this. He helped make the PCB board uh, for those button contacts. And it's such a cool project. So Bob had a live stream. He has another video coming out soon. I can't wait to see what comes with that. Uh, but the creator that really made this big was called Your Cool Uncle Marissa. And her YouTube channel is so cool. Uh, it's just, yeah, she kind of breaks down how to build this and walks through the whole process from ordering to making uh, talks about her experience. So what do you guys think? Hogging all the airtime here. It's cool. I actually was looking for an SP one when I was in Japan, but they're just too expensive, you know? And yeah. so I just ended up not getting one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just recently put together like the FPGA Game Boy Color thing. And this was so fun. Like it was so cool yeah. to like put together a handheld like this. Uh, it didn't require any soldering, which is amazing for me. And uh, I just got like a cheap EverDrive on AliExpress for twenty dollars that works with it because nice. my regular EverDrive doesn't. So now I've got like every Game Boy game on this thing. Ah. It <laughs> is so fun. I got to make a video on it, but I'm waiting on one other flash cart so I can do a comparison in the same video. And so, um, yeah, like I love this idea of like taking this older hardware. I mean, this mm -hmm. one's a little bit unique because it doesn't actually have any old hardware. It right. just kind of mimics everything. But um, yeah, I, I love the idea. Yeah, I think it's I think it's so cool that we're we're still in 2024, you know, repurposing the SP and other Game Boys to this day. I mean, just a few weeks ago, we were talking about the Game Boy Color OLED mod kit, which I actually finally ordered one, by the way, and I'm excited for that. But uh, just it's really cool seeing them repurpose this old stuff that otherwise might have might eventually land in a landfill. So keeping the Game Boy alive in 2024. And I like the different colors too. The one in the thumbnail, Ace. Where did you find that yellow one? I can't even find that. Or did you just custom? I I did some work on it. Nice. Okay. I was like, <laughs> yeah. well, everyone's like, you made it look like a play date. <laughs> that sweet I yellow. Did some work on it. Yeah, I know. I know. Sorry, okay, guys. You it was on purpose. So that was our April Fool's joke. Okay. That's good. Yeah. It was sure. an artistic twist. <laughs> <laughs> it was very nice. 
Yeah, I really want to buy it, even though I guess it doesn't exist. I mean, you but, probably could. I, I, I'm sure there's yellow shells. Yeah, or you could paint one. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, don't, I feel like the the Game Boy Advance SP. Like I, I own one, but it's bar. I let uh one of my friends borrow it so he can trade some Pokemon because yeah, he's doing it the old school way. But yeah. I think the Game Boy Advance SP, like the form factor, is almost perfect because it's pocketable and you can, it just opens up to something more comfortable this is really cool but it doesn't look as comfortable it, it feels yeah. like a cramped 280v yeah yeah and people have said who've made these like yeah it's not comfortable there's no mm -hmm. why are you doing this because we can that yeah, the exactly. answer always is yeah. because we can and also james makes a good point in chat here saying they're 3d printed you can do any color mm -hmm. well okay yeah that's true you're right, but I don't have a 3D printer, so PCB Way also will print. You can also get one of these. <laughs> Literally, the next project is somebody going to be taking the guts out of this and putting it just into a play date. Bumping so, out the mesh. Speaking of Bob Wolf, he did want a while back, or he was trying. I don't know if he actually finished it. He was trying to put a Miu Mini yeah. guts into a like Game Boy shell, like a full-size yeah. Game Boy shell. I think that would be cool. I would love to do something like that. That would be fun. I'm mm -hmm. ready. This springtime always feels like a good time for projects for some reason mm -hmm. to me. I'm like, I want to get some custom buttons, you know, go to various booth or Sakura and start doing some projects. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the market for it, everybody, info's in our description. I think it's time we get a, an RH community 3D printer. That actually is not a bad idea. <laughs> just saying, like, that is not a bad idea. If we yeah, all no. pull together, we have so yeah, many get 3D really printing one. folks in the yeah. Discord. Uh, 3D printing. So Russ, do you want to? Are you going to get a 3D printer ever? Or are you? I don't have the space for it, you know. And I, the thing about me is, I am such like a one track mind that I would, you guys wouldn't see me for a few weeks because I right. would just get into you it, you know. It. And so <laughs> oh, I know. I'm just so worried about that. I just want let the experts do that stuff. You know, I'll buy it on Etsy. I don't mind paying right. my twenty bucks or well, whatever. Right, so you're going to be bankrolling the the 3D printer for RH community, and yeah, I, I get it. Thank you for <laughs> whatever for that. I think that'll be really good. We can we can write Retro Game Core right on it for some. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's totally worth it. We can yeah. 3D print him his so, logo. We can, yeah. <laughs> that's a thank you. And it'll I mean, live at my it'll live at my house, but I don't have time to do it. So I'll have Ban come back and live here again, and he loves to 3D print. 3D print everything. So Just, oh, we need well, a wedge for something. Let me 3D print that real quick. My people can call your people. We'll figure something out. Are you guys ready to talk about a new possible handheld? I'm not sure if this is an April Fool's joke, so let me just preface with that. But that's right. Game console company supposedly <laughs> is making another handheld called the R37S. This has an RK3326S inside, and it has a separated D-pad like a PS4, and it has vertical placed stereo speakers which aren't quite aligned on the bottom so we wonder is that a photoshop job bob wolf, bob wolf on twitter called us out and said i think that's just badly photoshopped so i people have been asking the guy who leaked this on our discord you know is this real is this a joke and he has not debunked it yet and he's usually a credible source uh a aeolius ux and had been confirmed multiple leaks this year have been confirmed from this person and um i don't know what to tell you Maybe it's just a render, but what do you guys? It looks thought? like the XU10, right? I mean, it's almost yeah, yeah, it, it does. That. It does just with that second speaker on the bottom. So dumb looking. Like it's crooked. I wouldn't like. How would it sound if you're listening to stereo sound that's vertically oriented? It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's you can kind of see where the D pad was photoshopped if you look yeah. at like the bottom and is that just uh, the XU10 D pad? I think so. We mm. zoom in, enhance. This is Please. fake. This is. It's got to be fake. It's. It has to be fake. It won't let me. <laughs> okay, it won't we'll, let we'll me just, do it. We'll just focus it in frame here. I mean, it, they seem to be making like elevated e waste, and this would be a step back for them. Yeah, I. I really hope this is a joke. This is great. I don't want to have to buy I'm this. Just you know, over I, this. It's crooked. <laughs> it's it's the laziest it's Photoshop not, yeah, I've ever it seen. It is crooked. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> but I I still like my 36S. So on oh. the other hand, I'm slightly intrigued as if this is for some reason real. But I Wait. just have to think it's a joke. 
Yeah. Oh. Did you? Yeah. yeah it's it's it oh, has to be a joke. It, doesn't their other device already have an uh, arcade thirty three twenty six S anyway? XU ten. As far yeah, as I know. No, yeah. from them. Did, did, did they make the XU ten? I don't even uh, know who makes the XU ten. How Kitty's XU- friend makes that? Magic X is yeah. the name. The regular R thirty six S doesn't that already have an RK thirty three twenty six S? Is it? I thought it was thirty five. Been too long. Is it a thirty? No, it's not thirty five sixty six. I'm I'm pretty We've sure. Already, half of us have reviewed this. We should know this off the top of our head. <laughs> see, I stay away from this. This stuff. You, this is I'm, too much. See, I'm googling it. Too low level. Like, googling it. As I know, only the XU ten is the thirty two XS S. Everything else has just been the Rock Chip thirty two sixty six. Well, thirty three twenty six. I googled it and our my own video came up and it says an RK thirty three twenty six S Linux handheld. Yeah, but I very well right. could be wrong. For which no, handheld? I think you're right. For the thirty six S. Oh really? But Retro Game Core is two above me, and yours says RK thirty three twenty six. So let's. Yeah. Is it time for a retro fight? Or <laughs> I don't even want to join into that fight. Who cares? No. <laughs> I don't know if it was or not, but I'm probably I, I am ninety nine point nine percent sure I'm the in the wrong on this, so I'll have to update that. But if you if any of you detectives out there want to investigate and see which one of us owes the other lunch, let us know in the comments below. Um, make it a very, I'm on AliExpress okay, right now. Fine. Fine. As long as it's gluten free, do they have gluten free lunchables? Wait, we're know, both gluten free. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's all good. Someone, someone will find out. <laughs> and Ollie, it's just says thirty three twenty six. Looks like somebody's updating their video, and that's me. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> nice. Video's I mean, only been up for five months. There's, there, there, there's not much of a difference. Well, okay. Here's why it doesn't matter: is that it is a point zero one percent improvement to the gpu side of the 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 soc right that's all there is and it's basically just a way for them to make a new SKU to sell it as a new product uh, on the chip side not on the handheld side mm. although probably that too but for accuracy i'm going to go into the video right now boom now it's an accurate video <laughs> the hindsight is so great thank you you guys ready to talk about um, our new partnership? Is Do it what? time? Just hold Do on it. now, Ish. Hold on now, Ish. <laughs> Listen. The Fisher Price Laugh and Learn. This is a classic from Fisher Price. This is one of their best controllers. Now, let me preface all this by saying. Uh, Rob, do you mind going into the Discord link there that shows my announcement from today? Oh, man. <laughs> I just, I, I need to let everyone who doesn't know about this, it's not a big deal or anything. Yeah, give me one second. Okay. Oh, I know. No. Well, listen. <laughs> we. Rob, why are you laughing? <laughs> why, why, you just like so seriously hold up those handhelds. <laughs> I need to remove my bokeh effect. Just a second. Okay. Now you can see them. Okay, listen. (laughs) They turn on by accident. Just hold on. This is going all wrong. Okay. Yes, my announcement. So if you were on our Discord today, you might know that, yes, we were acquired by uh, the brand Fisher Price. Uh, They're a (laughs) subsidiary of Mattel. So, Rob, answer your Discord pings. My God, man. Uh, what is going on? <laughs> That's why I want to open up Discord. <laughs> okay, close, we'll close Discord. You do this to me every freaking close week. Discord. I, I have important news to share. Um, as, as, as as yes, I know, and people think I still hear the. I still. It's still just, pinging. I'll remove it from the show. We, <laughs> we were acquired by Fisher Price, the subsidiary of Mattel, who makes the Barbie games like Barbie Explorer for PS1, one of my favorite all-time games. Uh, this was really tough to kind of come to this conclusion after months and months of back and forth negotiations with their top lawyers and brass between their people and our people. Zoo. And Zoo, 
and uh, he handled most of it. <laughs> Is Stubbs tearing up about this? I was really emotional. You know, it was ups and downs. It was <laughs> late night calls. It was plane. It was plane rides back and forth to Tokyo, and um, you know, Tokyo. it was a lot. Anyways, so after the acquisition was was settled, I announced it on Discord today, of course. And we have a bunch of new channels. So if you want to get excited about things like they're brand new, and this thing is beastly, by the way. I, I am, I am, of course, getting paid to say this since I work for Fisher Price now. But uh, <laughs> this is the twist and learn. So this not only is a horizontal candy bar handheld, but you can twist it and learn from it. That RGB and lighting it has RGB lighting. It has a non-clickable L3 stick. It has three very prominent face buttons in the different shapes here. It has a um, really nice rubber membrane D-pad, and it has lots of different funny buttons on the screen. Usually you don't have buttons on screens. You have like a touch screen maybe, but this is actually a non-touch, non-OCA laminated display, and it's so good. I <laughs> This D-pad being again. on the wrong side is upsetting me. It takes AA <laughs> batteries. Well, Aish, you know, like, like, and as I said in my announcement, we can't keep all RH's staff. They weren't planned to pay everybody. Some people have to go. Anybody, mainly who is anti Fisher Price on our team, who has dissenting opinions like Aish, they're going to have to be sort of cut <laughs> from the fat. Um, they, we need maximum hype, hype, hype. Um, tell your friends about Fisher Price gaming products, and these are for your friends and family and babies and kids. And this one is called the Little Gamer. You know, I've talked about this before. It comes with a cartridge and has like a Tetris situation on the side. And these are just really fun just to take around town on the bus to Starbucks to pick family picnics. And uh, your kids will love these. There's also another one that controller Rob was showing, which you know we'll pull up on screen. And this is only, it's a reasonable amount of money, right? It's people could buy that. It's like six bucks. Hell, I got this on sale full for no money, obviously because Fisher Price is sponsoring this entire situation. But uh, how the hell do we get me back on screen? There we go. It's it's, <laughs> it's Stubbs time. Long story short, everybody is uh, it, it is. Of course, April Fools, but we didn't participate in April Fools this year. Otherwise, this would be a crazy joke, and I wish it was. You know, my life is hell now. I'm having to wake up at three in the morning, having to take calls from corporate, and they're wanting to, you know, work this and that into the podcast, and we have to talk about this. And I worked out a deal. Okay, I worked out a deal where we can talk about Leapfrog, we can talk about Lexibook, we can talk about other early learning handhelds, and not be totally, you know, constrained. So we have some creative flexibility still. And we can talk about Ambernic, Retroid, AYN, and all the stuff this podcast normally does, but we do have to have a three to five minute shill segment every episode. And we say, you know what? That's a good that's a good trade-off. So what do you guys think about this about this one? Uh it's it's interesting. I mean, they got the analog stick up top, that's good. So depends if you're gonna be playing, you know, high end games. That's good. Look at the, the, look at the on the wrong that style analog stick. Well, on that one, yeah, the D-pad's on the left. Like, well, that's, that's the great that's, thing that's about it, though. Is it, See, that's going to train. That's going to train us. Oh, you know it's for I mean? Kate mode. It's for us to get become better <laughs> players, you know. And so I, oh, I appreciate it's that. Train you to become an accountant in the future. You got a numpad <laughs> on that thing. And you know, you can do the Konami code on here and get a special song. Let me just demonstrate. Do people what they want. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B A start. Blue circles for you, green triangles for me. So that's yeah, that's really fun, and it is a clickable L3 stick, by the way. It is clickable. <laughs> the Trim UI Smart doesn't even have that. So you want to talk about good handhelds? You talk about the Twist and Learn from Fisher Price. Get rid of your AYN Odin. Get rid of your Steam Deck. Get rid of your ROG Ally. Get rid of your Retroid Pocket Four and RG Five Five Six. This is truly all you need in 2024. Everyone's getting connected and connecting up to Wi-Fi and these smart homes and all these crazy things when all you ever needed 
with something simple. You can take this out camping. You don't need Wi-Fi. There's no achievements, but it does. You can twist it and you can learn from it. Look, this goes up and can down. What other handheld goes up and down like this? <laughs> this is not it. <laughs> yeah, the switch. Yeah, but it stays in that position. Look, you can keep it in the down position. You can put it in the up position. Cute dog. It only has the one game, unfortunately, but it's it's enough for me. And um, this really, really makes me happy. So um, I have been sponsored to say all of these words. This was a pre-written script, of course, from corporate. But what do you want me to say? I've sold out. It was only a matter of time. Oh, God, it's it doesn't turn up. It doesn't have an off button. If I had one. What? OK, I'm not allowed to say anything negative about the product. Um, it, it, it doesn't have an off button. Take the batteries out. You're screwed. Get out while you can. Please send help. <laughs> All right, you guys want to talk about. Uh, let's see here. We're the just RG... having... <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's go. Crazy. All right, yeah. cool. Um, I'm sorry, Russ. I'm really sorry about that. Russ is not in any way connected to any of this madness. <laughs> we made this deal on our own. He was in Japan for completely unrelated reasons. I didn't even tell the team about it until yesterday. So, I'm sorry that I dedicated like 20 minutes to that segment. But nevertheless... It's time to talk about a new project. So Russ from Retro Game Core recently spent some time in Japan with uh, uh, Jintaro-san. Did I say that right? Jintaro-san, yeah. Jintaro-san. San. Um, on Twitter, who is just infamous for some of the coolest uh, projects and interesting things related to this, this scene over in Japan and uh, has made a custom, cool, light-up... Um, PCB situation for the RGB 30 and it's called uh, Jintaro's PC Jintaro's Flex PCB and it's on sale now over on the booth store and you can purchase it for about $12 USD plus shipping and lead time will be a little bit but it does start shipping on the 3rd of April so this is a really cool project Russ do you know anything more about this you guys met up and hung out a bit yeah so there are multiple you can like choose your LED color uh, yeah. however one you want, you know, and so I think he gave me a blue one. He's going to send me another one as well. I'm going to do two different mods. Like I have a white RGB 30 and then a blue one that I just bought, like the dark blue one. So I'm going to do two different mods and see like what the colors look like. It does require soldering. I've never soldered before. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'll learn how to solder for this project. And so, uh, but it also removes the accidental diagonals on the D pad. And so that's one of the nice things about it too. So if you're already going to be like trying to fix that up, it'll be, um, Pretty interesting so yeah i'm looking forward to trying this out i think that honestly the rgb 30 you know it came out what was it like september of last year i think it's yeah. still got some legs on it you know there are complaints yeah. obviously about like the battery charging and stuff and it is really finicky in that regard but i i do think that there's it's going to be kind of an enduring handheld for a while because of that mm -hmm. screen so it's very unique yeah and, and this there's is so much gonna... love around the rgb 30 and there is rightfully so it's it's pretty awesome yeah, and uh, this is going to be pretty involved too, as you can see. You're going to be you're going to be soldering. You're going to be <clears throat> getting pretty in depth. And so the first link you should click on if you want to look at this is going to be uh, just the one in our sources link in our description, where Jintaro asked to please read that first before you try to purchase because it is it is not plug and play. So you're mm -hmm. going to be getting down and dirty with your RGB thirty. It looks like a good project to start soldering, though. It doesn't seem like you need to worry. Like, it, I'm sorry, it doesn't seem like it's going to be super complicated. It's just a couple right. of dots. So yeah, you can see what they're doing like, right yeah. there. That's it. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. Not too and bad. Soldering is not like once you actually start doing it, it's really not that hard um, right. unless you're doing like micro soldering. But that's a whole different thing. Like if you're just doing stuff like this, it's a fun project. It feels really cool when you do stuff like that. And if you're into that like RGB look, this is awesome. Yeah, it looks like you're soldering down the the contacts, which is mm -hmm. so I don't think there's any wiring. I'll just right. Just, that's it. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's not too bad. That would be a fun little project. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for my green RGB 30 that's on the way from that sale they had recently, um, mm -hmm. and maybe I'll order one of these. I don't know. I don't need the RGB lighting as much. It's cool, uh, and I love various buttons. So I would love to get a set of those. 
Uh, but I don't know. I'm, I'm undecided yet. I think it, it would be a fun project. I just need to get my soldering iron out and figure out a good way to ventilate this room. It is, the the cool. final result is awesome looking. It's though. really cool. Yeah. yeah. Like and that. there's various different types of D-pad and, and face buttons, depending on what yeah. kind of color combination you want. So I think altogether, there's probably dozens of different ways that you can light up your RGB 30. And then you add in the fact that there's like, what, six different model colors now for the device itself. Mm -hmm. You've mm -hmm. got like just so much customization just right. from this one little mod, which is kind of cool. Well, that's not the only mod, too. There's another one that uh, calls called an analog hole plug from Ocelot8 on Reddit. And this is one where if you don't want sticks and you want to turn it more into a Game Boy situation, you can this actually take cool take the joysticks out and then replace it with these concave, you know, fitting plugs. Stick them right in there, and there you go. You got a lighter weight handheld you can put in your pocket easier. That's really yeah, cool. Really so this cool. is on Reddit, and you can print these and... Yeah, this was neat. in particular, yeah, we'll... I, I like the right analog stick. Like that's not one I use very often, especially because yeah. this can play vertical shmups. Like I don't need to turn the device on its side and use the right analog stick for that. So I, yeah, I, I'd prefer to have just one left analog stick. I don't know how often I would use the right analog. It really depends on yeah. how much more comfortable it is with that one gone. Yeah. 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 This looks really cool though. I, this might be one I try. I do have two RGB thirties now, so I, I don't know guys. I'm, I have one. I might get rid of it to grab a yellow one. I secretly want one in every color, but I'm not. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But... Well, like Russ was saying, it's, it's there's so much. Choice. There's so much life in it still, and not only because of the hardware mods, but because of the custom firmware side of things. So there's a new OS that dropped yesterday that was finally released, or at least their uh, their latest release called Plum OS. Now this is mainly a Japanese OS. It's a modification of Jealous. Uh, and Jutaro was telling me about it, and uh, his team is is the one working on this, apparently. But it's called Plum OS, and it is out now, so that's in our description as well. Focused specifically on the RGB30. Yeah, and Rob, I should have a link there underneath this bad boy. Underneath the whole plug. <laughs> <laughs> I added it on pretty last minute, so it might, you might have to go back to the original page. Okay, let's see what's there. It's just a link to the GitHub, anyways. But uh, there's yeah. it, it. It looks nice, and uh, on on Jintaro's Twitter, oh, you can it. see. Oops. <laughs> that's the next. That's the Spoilers. next. Spoilers. There you go. I got it. I got Spoilers. it. That's our next segment. So it's Give point version away. point five. It's just another option, you know, and it's one I'll probably I'll probably try out. Especially because we were heard recently that uh, that Rocknix what used to be called jealous it was going to was going to stop supporting the 3566 but now i learned today that that's not happening that now jealous has been rebranded as rocknix and will be adding support back for the 3566 chip line and the x55 so that is really really crazy i'm not sure all what changed i think their lead dev few left and yeah. now this is the team reforming with some of their past people who did some other forks, and they're all combining now into what is now Rocknix. Is that right, Russ? Yeah, basically, Fute uh, is he's. I think he's wording it as he's retiring, like he just doesn't okay. want to do any public development at this point. Um, and so, yeah, he basically left, and so all the rest of the guys that are still around and, and developing just said, "Okay, we'll rebrand it, but keep the we'll fork it, and then just kind of keep going from there." And so, even the Jealous Discord is now the Rock Nix Rock uh, Discord. Nix. So it's just an, a oh, new nice. name, and it stands for Rock Chip and Linux, you know, combined. And so, uh, yeah, they're bringing back RK thirty five sixty six support, and already there are builds out uh, that have everything covered except for the Palkiti X fifty five, which they are working huh. on. Uh, that one requires a different bootloader, so it uses a different firmware image, and so they just haven't released it yet. But uh, so we're not losing any support really from what we had with Jealous. It's just now kind of moving forward. And there's a couple development team guys who uh, I think are going to do some really interesting things with this. And so I'm I'm looking forward to just seeing where it goes. Uh, and the cool thing is, you know, for me in particular, you know, Jealous has been kind of synchronized with the RGB 30 for me. Yeah. But it's just one of like many options that we have, like Plum OS now. We've got, you know, first Jealous, now Rocknix, and then also Arc OS works on it. Min UI has a build for it. There are so many different ways that you can enjoy games in the RGB 30, which is one of those reasons why I think it has longer legs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and 
people are saying in chat, when can we leave the RK3566 in the past? This is one that just keeps on because of the modding community, uh, because of the custom firmware community, we just keep on. We can't even leave the 3326 behind. The 3326 is still getting new releases. It won't die. <laughs> so it's, it's that's crazy to me. I, I can't. Yep. <laughs> I can't. It's because you, you can get the chips for cheap. These older ones now and over over in China, you know, people get excited to play uh, just as long as they can play games. You know, they get excited. Who's telling us this recently? I forgot which guest now, but uh, they were talking about this where it's like they're just excited to play games. They're not as picky. I think it was Shem, actually. They're not as picky about, you know, what uh, the chipset is. You know, they don't care about the exact specifications that much. So that's probably why we're seeing some of this and over in the West. We're over here like, what in the world? This is the same thing over and over again. We're so used to right here to being what's the new latest flashy upgrade mm -hmm. Intel AMD Intel AMD, you know, so. We just want new toys because you if, you toys. Really, if you really look at what a 3326 can play and you actually try to play like all the best games from all the systems that it can play, it's probably going to take you years to actually work your way through those libraries. Yeah. But as soon as we get a new device that's more powerful, we jump on it, even though the last one we had could already play more than what we can realistically play ourselves. And I think having more devices like that is a nice gateway for a lot of people into the hobby, too. I got to call out Sean. <laughs> Sean's comment, Stubbs, you're saying others are picky. How many handles do you have again? Hey, now, I only have like maybe 30 to 40 handhelds. I was going to say, you probably have the least out of all of us on the panel right now. I think now. so, yeah. The last time yeah. we discovered I had the yeah. least of everybody. Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think, Rob, you might win for the most. Maybe you and Russ uh, No, tied. I think Russ wins. You think yeah. Russ wins? I have so many. I have way too hundreds many. i have way too many you know and i keep trying to put them up on ebay auction but like it's just yeah we just haven't got around to it yet and so i do have a big auction coming and i think i've got like 25 handhelds ready to go but it's just a matter of getting all the ebay listings and pictures and all that stuff getting the shipping figure out it takes a lot of work and so uh, we just aren't there yet but yeah hopefully soon yeah if you are, if you need help out there and you reach hundreds of handhelds, just we're gonna make a new channel on our Discord. I think called <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna call it. I think it's it's just gonna be, 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 be a Russ in Wait, there. <laughs> unless unless you're a handheld content creator, then it's like okay, it's it's for work, you know, deducted on your taxes and all that. It's for B-roll. It's for just, yeah, it's for comparisons, it's honestly. Like, I need compare? them to be able to, like, this handheld is smaller, bigger, these buttons are different, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And so I keep one of everything just to, so I can do that. And so the ones that I'm auctioning off for charity here soon, those are just above and beyond the ones that I'm already keeping for those comparisons. So, can I have you can tell yourself that you know, <laughs> I don't have a problem, man. It's for work, <laughs> it's okay. We understand. <laughs> All right, listen, we're doing a, a charity giveaway to me from Russ's library. And <laughs> to you. it's only the good, but it's only the good handhelds. So yeah. that's, we're going to work. We're going to figure this out. I've got an um, RG35XX 2024. I could sell you for cheap. Newest model. <laughs> $5 is the max. We'll start there. That's, that's mm, for I could be pushed a little bit. Killer. I know shipping from Hawaii is another 40. Yeah, that's when I shipped you the that odor and I was like, oh my God, why? <laughs> why is it so much? <laughs> yeah. That's how it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll stop abusing our guests now. Yep. Let's talk about Arc OS updates. So I'm sorry this leads you to Discord and you can skip it if you want, Rob. But um <laughs> yeah, <I'm going> to. <laughs> I'll just I'll just link open up on my side. We don't need to show anything. Just uh, Christian Haitian has some really cool new updates for Arc OS on a multi multitude of devices. Now uh, GameCube.rvz files are loadable, which is new, and that's only on RK3566 devices, which are notoriously not great or GameCube, of course, but the fact that it's possible means you could try that and that'd be, that'd be fine. You can uh, kind of get Pikmin to work. You can probably get some 2D titles to maybe kind of work, but I don't know on the Linux side. I actually haven't tried um, for GameCube on the 3566 device yet. So I did. you did. Is it yeah. not any uh, better than Android? I mean, actually, I think it was a little bit better. I played Pikmin 1 for 
maybe two hours on the three five three P. Okay. Well, but yeah, if you the problem was if you zoom out too much, yeah, it's gonna it's a starter. It, it gets rough. But if you zoom in and you just kind of run around and have about thirty Pikmin with you, you can mm. handle it. Well, all right, that's that's fair. On top of those updates, there's also the ability to um, fixed missing save states, fixed rotation issues, fixed the PPSS PP GUI. Thanks to the Amberlec team for that uh, part of it. And that's one update. And then there was a second update that hit uh, like a day later with updates to Portmaster and adding a .neo extension for Neo Geo, adding more emulators. It, it's like a, it's like 30 items or something. It's a lot. So you go into our dev announcement channel on our Discord or in our description and see what all the changes are. ArcOS is still one of my favorite OSs when given the opportunity to use it. It is just, yeah. Stood the test of time. What, what do you guys think about it? Arco is awesome. Was, he's, he's still working on it. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, that it's, was it's the first cool Linux thing. custom firmware I ever used. And it was on the Palkity RGB Max 2 on the orange one. And it was Ooh. great. I was that that actually like I was I'm still prefer Android, but my experience with ArcOS almost converted me outside of not having a touch screen. That's kind of the only thing. Like if if we could get a good Linux operation operating system that supported touch screens for like DS games, I would be sold because it's it's great. But until then, mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick on the Android side. But yeah, ArcOS was a great experience. So it was it looks great, it's nice and smooth, and you got a lot of options as to how you can kind of set things up for yourself. Well, next we got up, and thank you, Aish. Um, Portmaster this is, is coming. Cool. This is really cool. Is coming to the the TrimUI Smart Pro, and if you're a fan of Portmaster, which I definitely am more a fan all the time, uh, there you go. It's playing on another handheld, and this is one people are pretty excited for. Yeah, I need to do an update a video on the TrueMI Smart Pro. I know there's a new firmware update up, and so I actually bought a new Smart Pro, like because uh, I the one I had was like a pre-release one, like the shoulder buttons and trigger buttons were all mushy, and so um, yeah, I'm gonna. Well, thanks, Joey. Thanks for the reminder. Yes, I'm gonna be making a new video. <laughs> I still haven't used one. It, it looks cool, but the Vita sticks kind of. It's, I don't know. I'm not sold on those, although I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be playing a lot of games that use the sticks anyway on something like that. But it looks nice. The build quality looks pretty good. And speaking of Portmaster, you guys hear that Bellatro is coming to it, which is oh, a awesome. brand new addictive game on Steam, which I was almost picked up today. It was like 14 bucks. And then I saw that it's out for Portmaster already, which you still need to buy it so you can get the source files for it moved over. But uh, that is crazy. They're Portmaster team is getting super quick on getting some of these newer games. Yeah, it's really cool. Portmaster is one of the reasons I'm excited for the... What's that one called? The, oh, man, I just forgot. I have it right here. I'm looking mm -hmm. at it. I can't remember the name of it. The Game Force Ace to actually get yeah. good game, Linux support game, because... Game Force Ace. Yeah. Ace, yeah. Because yeah. that would finally give us a good, powerful, armed Linux handheld that could probably handle a lot more games than, than what we've had access to so far. <laughs> And now are, are we going to get addicted to Bellatro as a, as a group, just like what happened with Power World and that damn hell? What is game? Bellatro? It's like I've a poker, it around, but... it's, it's a rogue like RPG mixed with poker. So, so like Slay the Spire? Kind of, yeah. I haven't played it myself yet, but I, I was watching yeah. some videos today. Okay. Joey, Joey was going on and on about yeah, it. Yeah, Joey's like, Bellatro really... this, Bellatro that, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, Have you guys played no, Slay the Spire? <laughs> He said it's very good. I, yeah, I, I played Slay I have played Slay the Spire. I want to play Slay the Spire again now. That's all I can think about now. <laughs> you know, the game that I've been just like addicted to is the Suiko Watermelon game. You know what I'm talking about? Where you drop the fruit and they get bigger yeah, or yeah. you hit or whatever. And so there's Satisfying. a demake on Pico 8 and it is uh, Pico so 8. Awesome. Oh, nice. The physics yeah. are just crazy. And so it's just so entertaining. My wife hates it because she thinks it's too <laughs> sporadic. But I'm like, this is perfect. You know, it's just chaos. I, my daughter loves slicing watermelons in VR. With Fruit mm. Ninja, is that mm. similar? Nope. Oh, that sounds okay. really cool. <laughs> no. I actually need That's a short game story. right now. I just finished the uh, Persona Three Fez, 
and mm. I kind of have a bunch of games in my backlog, but they're all really long. And after a long game, I like to pick up, you know, a short yeah. game, like five, 10 hours. So if anybody in chat has anything they would recommend that isn't addictive and an endless game, uh, I would love to hear it because I'm kind of in that in between. Persona was long. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, well, I, I know. I need to play Persona awesome. still. So, well. Yeah, I did Persona 3 Fez, and as soon as I was done, I went with the answer, which is kind of mm. like their version of DLC, which mm -hmm. is supposedly another 30 hours, but I got it done in like a little over 10 because I, I did like an XP cheat just to get through it. What about Hattress? Anyone play Hattress? It's Tetris with hats. No. I, I, I saw a bunch of copies of it in Japan, actually. It's a Game Boy oh, no. game or Famicom yeah. game or something. Yeah, yeah I, I saw it all over, and I was like... Do I want this? It was only like a dollar. And I was like, ah, I shouldn't be you buying do. games that I've never seen before. You know what I Dude, mean? It's, like for it's, physical copies. It's an actually good game. It's Hattress. Hmm. It's Tetris with hats. <laughs> I figured that <laughs> one out. Tetris with a hat. <laughs> well, all right. I, yes, I know. Ban Ban gets it. He needs it. He just he's it's talking about person. he's talking about beans. He just needs he's hungry. He's talking about beans. He's, <laughs> I so need it. I, 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 <laughs> He gets so excited for beans. It's a lot of fiber. You know, I get excited for games <laughs> of the month. Are you guys excited for games of the month? It's April. So games of the month, April is here, which is uh, means new and tasty games for you to play with. How do we get the damn? Oh, that's back to the stage. There we go. Game. <laughs> we're, we're, we got a crazy operation going here. Game of the X. So for March, we had... You know, we had some decent titles. I didn't finish Star Ocean 2 in time, but we're here with more. And the new ones this month are for 96, pre-96, uh, it is Live a Live on Live SNES. Alive. Live Alive. <laughs> Live Alive. <laughs> Live Alive. <laughs> Live Alive. Dude, That's funny. Yeah. I was I just loaded up the, uh, the Switch version of it the other day. I actually want to just patch the Super Nintendo one today because I saw it on the list and I was like, oh, I've never tried it. And so I patched it and put it on yes. my Odin 2. So. Nice. The Switch one just looks so nice. Yeah, I, I like love that. that. I love that graphic style. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, that, that uh, Boca 2D, 3D mixture. Like Octopath, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a grid-based, a turn-based RPG. And it came out back in 94 by, uh, by Squaresoft. And it was pretty unknown. It was in Japan. And then in recent years, not only with the fan translation, uh, but they had the the remake on Switch, and now it's on Steam. And this is one I'm finally going to try out this month. So it is a beautiful art style. Russ, how far are you? Oh, you I just get? went through like the intro. I just wanted to check that the patch worked and that, yeah, the English looked good. They have a variety of fonts, which actually look pretty good. You can still kind of tell it's like a fan patch, you know, uh, like mm -hmm. it's just not perfectly polished but uh definitely playable and you, you just at the start you can choose between seven different characters to start the game with and so mm -hmm. uh, cool. it, it has a very octopath traveler kind of feel to it in that regard as well not just the art style of the switch version mm -hmm. they uh i always thought they originated that idea with uh oh gosh what were those games also by squaresoft um saga frontier saga frontier one and two had multiple characters uh, or at least the first Saga Frontier was, and branching storylines. And I thought that was the origination of that idea. But apparently they've been making other RPGs even earlier, like this one and uh, Romancing Saga. And it, it, yeah, it's just cool to see that uh, those different options. I thought that was only a thing in Mega Man. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> live a live, live a live. I'm live pretty sure it's live, live a live. Live a live. Live all. Yeah, it's. I thought it was live, live alive, right? Live live alive. I thought it was that. Just play yeah, the game. <laughs> like, we'll, oh, we'll play the game. You know, we're gonna hear how this is pronounced when Zoo does his segment. <laughs> Zoo is gonna be on the show, I hopefully live this month, and tell us about his experiences going through and beating these games. So um, just wait. Zoo wait Smith Western man. I don't trust how he pronounced things. I yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. We can trust him about as far as we can throw him. Now, the other game that was the 96 to 99 category this month is Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And that was for, mm. of course, N64 a Classic. I've actually never beaten it before. I've gotten close. What? I've gotten close. It's 26 hours. You know, what? I, I'll, I'll work on is it. Is it but you, really 26 hours? That's what it says. That's what it says. What do you want me to wow. say, Aish? 
No, I'm just, I'm just, I've beaten that game multiple times. It never feels like a long well, game. Well, I'll give it a shot. You can get 60 FPS now. You can do these mods. Ship of Herkinian. Yep, that's the best way to do it. I beat it earlier this year playing Ship of, Her of Herkinian. 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 Yep. Was that what that I did uh, is... Patreon that you subscribed us to that I was like, what the hell is this? No, that's the guy that's making, like, remaking the game in Unreal Engine 5. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. that's intense. That's, yeah, I'm not it looks for that. great. It's not even close to being done. It's more like a tech demo right now. But if you're a Zelda fan like myself, like just looking at this game with those graphics is amazing. But this game, though, so what I did with this one and what I would recommend, because it doesn't take too long to do, is mm -hmm. I did Ship of Herpikinian. I did the 60 FPS patch. And then I also added the 3DS, 3DS uh, uh, models. So the game just looks like a a more modern version of of that n64 one because of the characters I like it and you can also do like texture packs there's a lot of stuff you can do and it's really easy to mod that game but just being able to play it in 60 fps is really nice because you can also pick um you can change how the owl works so you don't get trapped in that dialogue log and you can skip like cutscenes stuff like that it's, it's it's a really good way to play that game i need to beat this game now this mm -hmm. is the month I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get enough points this year to get our RH merch bag to get our special handheld bag. I'm gonna earn it finally. Ace got a free one, so Zoo's gonna yep. want me to call that out. Uh, that's fine. I, was, I, st I still get the bag. I've never I've never had one, so it's a nice bag. You know, it's got my name on it. It's my bag. You can fit a lot in there. I heard you can fit your whole collection in there. Is that true? I mean, I can easily put my iPad, my Steam Deck in there, have room for a water bottle. No, it's a nice, spacious bag. And how do you you earn points by beating these games of the month? Mm -hmm. And you put them towards getting merch like this bag. Yep. Now with the Fisher Price logo, of course. That's the only thing. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the third game is actually called Way of the Samurai. I've never played this one. This is for PS2 and PSP. Oh, but it looks, man. That's, that's some looks, PS2 gen jank right there. It looks oh, really yeah. cool. It looks really cool. I don't know what you guys it are is talking actually about. Pretty fun. It yeah. looks really cool. Four hours long. I already love that. So this is the first one I'm going to play. And a look at the samurais. I mean, they're fighting. And there's different oh. it's like role-playing elements. It takes place in 1878. It has crazy okay. good replay value. Ghost of Tsushima at home. But it's for PS2, so you can upscale your graphics to 8K or whatever. I feel was like 1878 the year that they developed it as well, or <laughs> yes, yeah. those graphics. <laughs> this I forget if this game has uh dubbing. <laughs> this they is definitely a, a, yeah, it's not a PSP game that got brought to the PS2. Uh, this is this look actually next pretty level cool. jank here yeah. with this one. It wasn't great even when it came out. <laughs> it's been a while since I was in a sword fight, but that's exactly what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those sparks and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> I actually Incredible. do want to play this game though. Anything that's got samurais <laughs> in it, just I'm like, ah, I, I gotta at least try it out. Well, there's another edition this month. So now we've been showing off also this thing called RPG of the Quarter, which has been happening for years on our Discord, oh, but now we're so starting to publicize it. So once a quarter, we play role-playing games, and one gets nominated. So you have until June to beat this. It's called Rogue Galaxy. It's on PS2, 39 hours, action RPG, and yeah, the art style the right here. This is like so game. cool. It's made by the same developers as Dark Cloud, uh, another one I haven't played before, so... Uh, yeah might give it a shot i still got to finish star ocean I'm, I'm getting some full metal alchemist vibes from this game i'm sure this game is definitely kind of up there it's it. really good it's, i've heard never it. heard of it until i saw it but the art style i'm like okay I, got, I gotta give this game a try yeah i wonder if the steam can handle it i know i can handle some uh, <laughs> a pretty good amount of like uh ps3 rpgs i know cat max says what adult has this much free right. time the sad thing is like, I, no, if not I me. go on how long to be and Try. I see a game says like 30 plus hours, I'm like, I just, yeah. I just you know, you know what the great thing about it. <laughs> emulating this game is, is that there's, you can use cheats. You can like with RPGs, really long RPGs that are like 40, 50 hours long. But most of the time they're that long because you have to grind a lot to get to a decent level to beat the boss. But if you're yeah. just trying to experience the game and you just use a, an experience hack and you're going to be able to fly through those games because there's no more grinding. 
You can also use other things like fast forward in some games. So mm -hmm. you can, if you really want to experience those story games, there's ways to do it where you're not going to be spending, you know, a hundred hours doing it. Now, if you are completionist and you want to play everything it has to offer, like Skyrim, yeah, it's it's going to take a long time. But it really depends on what you're trying to get out of the game. Like with Zelda, I it's just 26 hours. I'm pretty sure I've beaten that game in like 10 hours. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think uh, I can beat it in maybe triple or quadruple that time. If I no, try. just use a guide. Add There's nothing wrong with using a guide. I, you You're going to need a guide for the Wadden Temple. Ace, you have to understand that uh, sitting down with the guide is like a whole other thing. So now I got to prop it up on a on a stand <laughs> and I gotta like have the guide over. It's like a whole operation. I'm just gonna want to play on a Surface Duo. Plugin. You, you, you see, there's thing. a Simbic plugin for that. I, I guess <laughs> I don't know. I just these yeah. days, man. I just like to. I don't. I don't do guides as much these days. I just if I beat no, it, for, I beat it. Yeah. I don't want game FAQs. Remember those? Remember that website? If God, it hits the, all the time, game of accused is fantastic. If you're going to get a yeah. guide for one thing, but if I'm on the last day of the month and I'm down to the wire at that point, yeah, I'm going to use a guide just to get my point. So I don't lose my, my winning streak, but otherwise just, I'm going to come to save through. file off the internet. <laughs> I hear people I do that. Them. And that's, that's true, but nah. <laughs> cheating. that's cheating. Mm -hmm. So I still want to experience the game. No, but for a game like Ocarina of time, if you're not super familiar with 3d Zelda games, when you get to that water temple, you're you're gonna want a guide. Yeah, it, it gets pretty tricky in there because there's really no there's no clear signs about well, where you have to go, and it's really easy I'm, to miss the key. You're you're who I'm gonna DM when I have questions. Then <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, please, Aish, guide me through this temple. <laughs> I got you. Well, you guys want to switch it up a little bit? Let's talk about uh, our guest. We've been mm. just ignoring him over here. He's our friend, and we're talking about this and that and the other things. Stupid toys and... Uh. <laughs> oh, no, what have I done? Uh, Russ is here. Again. Uh, hello. It's going to distract me. Russ is here from... Hello, sir, from Retro Game Court, and you're back. You've been with us, I don't know how many episodes we've done together now. It has to be 10 A thousand. Now. Yeah. thousand. Last time we saw each other was sitting in the airport for eight hours, waiting for our planes after CES. Yeah, and it's becoming our annual tradition. It is kind of nice. I can't wait to do it again in 2025. Actually, uh, I thought it was going to be a one-year thing, but I'm, I kind of miss it already. I miss yeah, the camaraderie and, yeah, and hanging so out. And uh, you know, we got to have a good, good burger. I remember and. Just talk about the future of handhelds, talk about long walks on the beach and all the things we like. But I didn't get a <laughs> chance to ask you some of my most burning questions. So okay. we're going to ask you those questions now. Yeah, I haven't looked. Okay. I've Number seen them one, coming through, but I like didn't read them. On you course. don't know what they are. Okay. I'm going to ask like one or two from the panel, and then we're going to switch to the, all the audience questions because I okay. didn't get to include them all last time. I want to make sure I do this fairly. So my question for you selfishly is, what's your favorite Fisher-Price handheld? <laughs> uh, okay the 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 one that looks like a controller because i've seen videos people modding that to work on an xbox or something like that oh mm -hmm. the actual not, not that one yeah, yeah the, the, the one like a boomerang like old ps3 design oh, controller looking kind of one you yeah. can buy that for 6.99 on amazon with overnight prime uh, and you can mod it with the innards of an xbox controller yeah i don't know why yeah. but you can you can great question thank you yeah <laughs> welcome okay <laughs> full endorsement good um and what's your favorite april fool's day gag today so far oh definitely tech dweebs like uh i had i i saw some of them coming up i watched like the first minute or whatever i watched his whole video because i just wanted to see how he pulled it off because that's the kind of video i wanted to make this year and i didn't and so so good yeah so that was that was great i love i love videos about april fools that are not harmful like that's the thing for me is like don't don't harm people like don't tell people that they now are going to lose something like nintendo games on their uh Botticera builds you know but make something that's <laughs> kind and funny and obviously a gag you know and right so, yeah that yeah it, it was a good one he's a wholesome dude we're actually going to have dweeb back on here end of the end of this month so it's going to be a dweeb in time uh let's see let's skip ahead other questions thanks for your question stubs uh team retrogue why are you like this <laughs> 
Is it, Sorry. Is it on every episode? Every I guest like... gets this question. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a long answer for that. I don't think we have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if he means it in a negative way or like just a, just a positive. I think I'll say he means it in a positive way. Mikhailov is, is just a wholesome guy. I'd like yeah, to imagine totally. him fangirling, asking that question. Oh, he, <laughs> yeah, he fangirls. Yeah. Um, oh, I have a secret. I can't tell Russ from Mikhailov. Okay, I must hold it inside. I will okay. hold it inside. Now you got me thinking. Okay, I can't tell you what it's about. Something about a convention he went to. That's it. That's all I can say. Okay. Okay. Also from Team Retro, do you have enough handhelds to power a small engine if you wire them all together? Oh, yeah. I have so many. Like, I, I have to, like, take time, you know, maybe once a week or so and just, like, charge I gotta charge random handhelds back. Who am I gonna pick this week? You know, this one, this one, this one, which I haven't touched. So that's like my maintenance is uh is part of like my channel. It's crazy. Uh I, some people have like a, a random roller just to pick which handheld am I gonna use today? And they have all their handhelds in the list, and then they just do a randomizer to decide what they're gonna play. But it's serious maintenance. Yeah, that's why I don't keep more than 30 or 40 because it's anxiety of the batteries exploding while i'm asleep I, I just showed you the amount of sd cards i had here at the house your guys toes would curl like it's ridiculous i have so many just stacks you have them, them organized just piled up. i do i have like a tackle box and i've got them organized and labels and stuff but you tackle uh, box? yeah and sometimes i just lose them right and so like i've got a stack over there there's six of them sitting there they're all generic 64 gigabyte cards i have no idea what system they're for what are on them oh, or whatever so am i going to take the time and plug them into a computer and try to figure out what they're for or am i just gonna no. keep them around you know i can't really reflash those cards because right. if you flash a generic card it usually will will die you know right but you can always move files over on those cards and so that, that's the big difference between them so yeah i like this idea what uh what kind of tackle box you got over there uh, it's like a, like a hobbyists, like, you know, those people who do like beads and stuff like bracelets and stuff. So it's like a yeah. little plastic box and it's got like all these compartments. So I open it up and I've got all of them. And so then I have like a piece of masking tape over each that just says like Botticera, you know, X86. And so I've got like all of my different SD cards and different sizes and stuff put in there. If it's a device like SD card, like I know it's just for a certain device. I just leave it in the device. And so that way I know what it is, but yeah. Uh, kind of like a pill organizer, like a, a, that comment I just saw. Very similar. Yeah, that is awesome. I'd never thought of that. I use one of those like fancy holders on off Amazon, and then they only mm -hmm. hold like twenty to thirty cards. Right. Like, ah, now I have this pile that's growing to the left yeah. of that holder. So the other thing I do is that you know I've got a ton of like oh, hold on. these things, like the Samsung like holder things, and that's not going to focus on this. But you know what I'm talking about, like these yeah, things yeah, where yeah. you put a micro SD card inside yeah, the after. SD card thing. And yeah. so I will then put a piece of tape on this or I'll use a marker and label it. And so that way I can label these cards pretty easily as well. Fantastic. Uh, well, good question. Good question, Mikhailov. Uh, let's, I'll just get through this. What's your favorite non-retro gaming handheld hobby? Joey, retro handhelds. Joey's retro handhelds. Yeah, uh, I'm big into film and music. So I watch, you know, I like to watch movies and then uh, music. Like I got a vinyl library and stuff. Uh, I used to ride my bicycle a lot. Like I used to be like an avid bicyclist. I've got I've got some heart condition stuff, so I'm not able to run. I used to be a long distance runner, but I haven't been able to run in almost 20 years now. But I can ride a bike pretty well. Problem is, here in Hawaii, there are so many hills. You wouldn't think about it, but yeah. there are just a ton of hills. Like everything's just on a hill. And so uh, because of my heart condition, I can't really ride a bike up a hill. And so it's like the worst place to want to ride a bike. Plus the, the roads oh. are not made for biking here at all. Yeah. Like there's no lanes for it. Uh, the shoulders are narrow. Like it's just not a priority here. And so um, I used to be very much into cycling. Like I would go every day for like an hour or whatever. That was yeah. my workout. I just can't anymore. So yeah, now it's just retro gaming and then music and movies. Oh. Don't forget bodybuilding. Oh and yeah, bodybuilding. And bodybuilding, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I like this no running idea. Running is just a... It's a whole thing. So <laughs> what what's what's the most strenuous exercise you can do safely? Uh, I mean, bicycling with it, you know, like I can okay. uh, cause I just my issue is that I get out of breath like very, very quickly. And so like yeah. going up a hill while climbing stairs, all that stuff's really rough for me. And it's been forever. It's just it's a whole thing. And um, yeah, so I just really can't do any of that stuff. It's all good. I've gotten used to it. Well, fair, fair, fair. Um, OK, well, good question, Joey. 
zoo what's your perfect sunday i don't i don't think i think it's a joke question but uh yeah i mean every <laughs> sunday uh actually that's like my day off and so um we we'd have like a family day and so we just go out and do whatever usually it's like a short hike or whatever oh. or shopping and stuff like that so my perfect sundays are usually every sunday because i'm just hanging out with family so it's that's quaint okay that's you came at the ice cream sunday. day guy get some ice cream and no, I, I think he meant the ice cream oh oh sunday like a <laughs> no, i'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's oh a, oh the dad jokes uh from rob the retro tech dad hmm. how i've heard of him your, how do you keep your beard looking so luscious <laughs> is that is that real okay that's, that's written here it is on look at the notes page it is right it, there. it yeah. really is on there <laughs> it's, that's yeah. funny no, I don't. I don't do anything. I just have like a clipper, and I just do like a certain length for the whole thing, and I just do that every three days. That's it. And then I like trim it with another clipper, and that's it. I don't do any of that like, like getting it like like styled or any of that stuff or <laughs> angles or anything. I don't do any of that stuff. Got to remember though, I was in the military for almost twenty three right. years. I had to shave every day, so and so luxury. like as soon as I could grow a beard, yeah. I was like, I don't think I can. Like, I'm like, I, I think I got a baby face, you know, and turns out that I could, you know, it just took, it took a month to fill out. But then after that, yeah, like I'm, I'm just good now. So. Yeah. yeah I, I know that feeling I'm not allowed to shave. So cause <laughs> I'll, I'll look like I'm 12 years old. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. me, me too. I can't, I can't. Yeah, I can't so you don't do put it, any, no. any vitamin E oil or anything in there. Or any, <laughs> not so. not no. Oh, wow. No, that. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I wasn't I don't allowed to have a beard, and then I just decided, well, you know what? I'm just not going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Take life and be in charge, Aish. Yeah. So you got to do your thing. So I'm a proponent of, of that. Uh, Ban wants to know, what's your favorite way to have spam? Mm. Uh, so spam musubi, which is like the spam sushi. You know, it's got a piece of spam that's been fried, put it over rice, and wrap it in seaweed. Mm -hmm. And so that's like our mm -hmm. travel snack. Uh, and so we, um, will often, you know, take that wherever, like on an airplane or whatever, we try to sneak it into like, we used to like when we had football games here, the stadium's now closed, but, um, we used to sneak them in. And I think I told a story actually on this podcast yeah. once where like, we all were going, it's like my wife's whole family. So it was like 10 of us. And we were all like trying to sneak in and all of us had spam with subis, like in our pockets and our bags and stuff. Oh, and they right. stopped all of us. <laughs> and they were like, Hey, let me check your stuff or whatever. And then when they got to me, they just let me through. Cause I'm howly, I'm white. You know, it's like, he can't have spam with subi in his pocket. He's white, no you know, way. and so I was the mule for the family. I was able to sneak a bunch in. <laughs> nice. <And so, laughs> this is pretty funny. So. Oh, that's good. Good question, Ban. Thank you. That's all of our staff questions. But from the audience, we got Matt mm. HM. Question for us: <laughs> What product do you use in your hair? First of all, I I don't. If you guys don't know Matt, Matt has got an awesome channel. He's only yeah. made like uh, you know I think like eight videos or whatever, but they are all amazing. So oh, go yeah. check out his channel. Eleven um, out of ten. they're like oh, work yeah. hard, a massive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I use Baxter of California clay pomade. I've been using it for like I don't know almost ten years at this point. That's it. Hey, my dog's name is Baxter. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't even use product in my hair anymore. I just sort of shampoo conditionally once a week and then figure it'll work itself out and mm. it sort of remembers where to stay oh, mm. great i just put Low. water in mine just go a little like bit that. of water and it's happy for a while just getting Good kind of long though yeah it's time for me too i gotta get another time for a haircut same mm. troy moson moson hope i'm saying your name right question for us have you tinkered around with windows emulation on your odin 2 using WinLater or another windows emulator uh i have not uh just because I've, I've seen some things you know like for example um aiden did a video about putting WinLater on his retroid pocket i think to be able to yeah. play like the native version of pico 8 you know and that makes sense and stuff but it's hard for me to because I know if I start getting into that, I have to really get into it. It's going to take me a mm -hmm. whole week of research and whatnot to really kind of figure it out. And then what's going to come of that? We're going to be able to play Tomb Raider, like remastered or whatever, like not even the new Tomb Raider. We're talking about the old Tomb Raider. Like there's such a, a big barrier in terms of what types of games you can play right now that I just don't see the juice being worth the squeeze just yet. Yeah, uh, I know there are people out there testing it and they're finding all sorts of things that are really cool. I did mm -hmm. some of that stuff, you know, trying to get like, uh, Windows running on the original Odin, and it was fun, but it was just a huge distraction for me. And um, yeah, so I just haven't tried it yet. It's it's on my list, you know, like a lot of other project things. I just haven't gotten into it yet. 
Well, it's fair. And thanks for the question. And we're always here for the beauty tips. We are a <laughs> very men's style podcast now. Uh, <laughs> Alvin Balot Balotbot, question for us. Seeing that the Odin 2 is an Android endgame device, do you expect anything worth buying in the high end Android space this year? INEOS seems like a re redundant purchase. Yeah, so um, it's all going to come down to components and comfort and stuff like that now. So OLED display, better ergonomic grips, you know, things like that. There, the Odin 2 is just about perfect for me. It's it's not the most ergonomic in the world, you know. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, screen maybe could be, you know, OLED, you know, something like that. But I'm very happy with it. And so I, I no longer am concerned about, like, performance and well, yeah. whether or not a game is going to play. Like, that. we're out of that now, which is amazing, at least for now. And so... Uh, yeah, it's all going to come down to, is it more comfortable? Is it more pocketable? Like all those kind of things. And so I don't, I'm not looking forward to anything at this point, which says a lot about the Odin 2. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no, there's no need to push Android hardware any further right now. There really isn't. We got to wait for software to catch up. Yep. I think uh, if we got something like the, like the G cloud with the, uh, like a HN2 chip would be amazing. That would get me oh. excited. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. what, that's exactly what I was thinking about when I was talking about ergonomics. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that would big be screen, nice. comfortable with a nice D-pad. Yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Andrew asks, question for Russ: How are you able to keep up with such a rigorous release schedule? Ah, uh, two parts to that, really. So, one, uh, my release schedule is slowing down a ton. I don't know if people have noticed, but like, I mm -hmm. had a, I have a YouTube partner. It's like a person who like works at YouTube who like sits down with me every once in a while to like go over like, hey, we want you to grow because it, I mean that. It seems yeah. altruistic, but it's not because they like the more people watch YouTube, the more ads they'll make. So they're doing right. it of their own benefit as well. But for right. me, it's always like, oh, there's someone on my side, you know. Anyway, uh, we had to sit down just today and she was like, yeah, you're you're producing 30 percent less content right now than you were the same time last year. Okay. And it's a deliberate decision for me because I was like, I got to the point where I was pushing myself too far, like say <laughs> like a typical day, you know, I will work through, try to get a video done. I'm like, OK, I want to get this video out by tomorrow. But then it turns into it's midnight and mm -hmm. I haven't recorded my voiceover yet which is like the number one way I interact with people, right? Is people right. listening to my voice. But I am so tired at that point. I'm, I feel yeah. slurry at that point, you know? And so previously, like this time last year, I would push through. I'm like, it's okay. I will rally through, you know, drink like, you know, some coffee or something and just like kind of push through it. And it would yeah. just wreck me. Like I would be done oh, the next yeah. day. I wouldn't be able to do anything, you know, that kind of stuff. I've changed ever since uh, really around November. I was like, you know what? If I'm tired, I'm going to sleep. Like that's my thing I'm going to do now, you know? And so that does extend the video by an additional day. And, um, but I feel great when I'm recording it, you know, and I, I feel like I'm the right, like I'm the peak Russ kind of thing, you know? Right. And so, yeah. uh, so my, the rigorous schedule thing is actually going down, you know, <laughs> but I think the quality is going up and that's the most important thing for me is to make these things so watchable. My goal is always three videos a week. It used to be four videos a week. Now I do three a week. Wow. Uh, it's wow. just this, the like kind of rigmarole of staying into it. You guys have to remember I am full time, right? I wake up in the morning right. and it's like, I'm just going to make retro handheld videos. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I do when I wake up. And so that's a very different thing than trying to, uh, you know, balance work and all that kind of stuff. I don't have to do any of that. The thing is that um, it's 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 very dynamic. I just wake up the day after I've created a video and I go, okay, I've got a list of 100 videos I want to make. What am I going to make today? And so I always do a start, like a new refresh kind of perspective every yeah. time. And so that keeps me excited about what I want to work on, which I think just motivates me to keep going. And so that's probably why I can keep it up. I didn't even notice the slowdown really i mean yeah, maybe i'm only doing three a week now three yeah. week you're doing four a week before which mm -hmm. is still amazing that's yeah. that's truly amazing yeah i, I yeah i'm at zero a week right now <laughs> but <laughs> if, you, if you count this podcast then i always get one i always get one uh and uh i kind of do them when i want lately some on the yeah, opposite I've, schedule over us i've been turning down video topics left and right like i used to if something was kind of interesting to me and a company was mm -hmm. like hey we want you to review this thing i would just say yes and then i would be stuck with all these things that i had to review before i pissed the company off and i didn't I like being in that position i don't like that feeling and so i've just been like you know what? I'm just going to say no this time. I'm like, you can send it or I'll say that. Like you can send it. Right. Yeah. I'll we'll test it out. It and if it reaches my threshold, then I'll make the video. 
it, which leads to its own problems where I got a bunch of right. crap I got to get rid of now, you know. Uh, but otherwise, that's kind of what I've been working through is just kind of finding that balance where I am, you know, for n- number one thing always for me is to provide a service to everybody else. What is going to make the viewer like the most interested? What's going to be the most value to them? What are they going to enjoy? And so that's always what I'm trying to push and think about. So. Um, that was good. That was a really good question. I learned some things during that mm. as well. Uh, of course, now when when you get the review units for Fisher Price handles, they're a little stricter <laughs> on their what their rules are, and they actually do have enforcers. They have enforcers that they send to your house, uh, YouTube enforcers, <laughs> and they kind of bang on the door a little more aggressive than the tax man, and they'll or the person who's trying to do the the the, the what the uh, census because they get mm. really invasive it's for the government census fisher price people unfortunately they do, they do come to your house they take your family hostage it's very it's very it's... stressful until the content's done so uh, just know that if you're getting into fisher price review units everybody yeah, they sound brutal they're brutal <laughs> just be careful <laughs> sorry about that good question uh next up we have andrew peters russ has the four-year deal with your wife mm. extended how the hell does she cope with our wailing, flailing demands of you daily? That is a great question, actually. My wife is a saint, you know. Um, if those who don't know, like when I first decided to retire from the military and do this full time, I told my wife, I said, give me five years. And I said, we'll do this five years. I'm going to hustle as much as I can. And then we'll see from there, like, will I be able to retire, retire or whatever it's going to be, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's always kind of been my goal and the kind of ticking clock. And it's been a year at this point, a little bit over a year. And so that's where the four years left kind of thing comes from. Uh, it's funny because she's the one who has the aspirations as far as like financially and life goalie with us, you know? So she's like, oh, maybe we should buy a house like in Kaimuki, which is a place in Honolulu, you know, yeah. um, to be closer to like, you know, private schools or whatever. I'm like, all those sound great. All of those extend my timeline as well. You know, like it's like if you want to do those things that cost money, we're now talking a 10 year plan of retro game core versus five year, you know. And so she's good with it. You know, she doesn't mind. I'm the one, you know, working the 16 hour days, but she takes care of all this stuff on the back end. You know, she's yeah. she's figuring out how I'm fed and and all that kind of stuff. And so it's it's just been really amazing on her part as well that she's able to manage some of that stuff because I have been like taking things that I used to do and just taking them off. So I, I used to make dinner every night and now she does. And so um, it's kind of amazing. And she's, we're finding that balance and, and she's yeah. really enjoying it. So, yeah. Well, that's really cool. Um, that's not what we want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure out the right, uh, the right thing here. Um, great question. And from Matt, again, question for the whole group here. Do you think we've reached the point of diminishing returns when it comes to retro handhelds? You know, maybe if we're talking it's, retro yeah yeah i think so yeah but, yeah but it, we yeah. need a new linux chip absolutely like that's, yeah. that's the biggest thing holding us back we need some sort of chip that's linux friendly that's powerful enough for gamecube and ps2 and that's going to just start really opening the floodgates again and get excited mm-hmm. it's called the steam deck <laughs> but, but it's if it's it's big well right non x orange i'm talking arm oh right. okay arm, yeah, so, arm, 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 something arm. also possibly more compact as well that's that's another key thing there too yeah it really depends on what you consider retro that's if it's, what i was gonna say as well, well we're not getting into this again we're yeah. supposed to talk about clans well yeah because actually. we have ps3 and <laughs> xbox 360 and things like that mm-hmm. which again like we hope that emulation will improve on that front and yep. also that we can play on lower power devices as well and so there, there's there's always something to chase i think when it comes yep. to, to this you know if we're just talking handhelds like retro handhelds in general yeah because yeah, we have the odin too that will play anything retro you can throw at it as long as it's compatible with like a or six two or dolphin you're gonna be able to play it yeah now I, I feel like what we still don't have is that perfect handhold ergonomically that just feels the best like the Odin 2 is great but I don't like using that d-pad it's not in a good spot um, mm-hmm. I feel like while the sticks are great I would rather have something a little bit bigger so stuff like that is really kind of the only thing we have left to work towards if we're talking just retro handhelds but as far as like more performance and all that, we don't even have the software to be able to push it anymore. Yeah. Good points and good question. Alvin Balotbot, question for the whole panel again. Thoughts on why there isn't more developments for PS2 other than Aether and Nether? 
Yeah, I mean, it's. I think that just any Android emulation is is. Uh, you have to be a bit of a what does it say to Sir Masochist? One or the other. You know, you have to be a glutton for punishment, basically, mm -hmm. because not only do you have to deal with just the architecture and dealing with all that stuff, but then the users, like the the entitlement and the requests and all that stuff it takes a certain a type of person to be able to take all that and yeah. we've seen from other devs that sometimes they're not a good match for that kind of user demand and so i get why nobody is is lining up to to develop mm -hmm. on android so it's, it's interesting money, it like for for ps2 em, uh, emulation i mean look at pcsx2 mm -hmm. which they they've been at it for what 15 plus years now i mean mm -hmm. and they just keep going and yeah. going so they're like on the opposite end where they're just so focused and they just keep rolling out updates and they just mm -hmm. keep doing their thing, which is kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And they, there's also no monetary incentive for people to really get into it. Yeah. And the amount of time you have to, to, to like put into something like that is, it's, re it's not an easy commitment to make. And like mm -hmm. Russ was saying, like a lot of people take it for granted. They just think like, oh, it should work. And or they assume like just because one game's already working, everything else should be working already without understanding like, no, there's a lot going on here. You're literally taking something that's supposed to be for phone calls and looking at social media and asking it to run a console and run a huge library of games. So, yeah, yeah, there's just it's, there's just a lot of work into it. But there is another option that's kind of been in the works for a long time, though, and that's play. I, I'm not sure mm. how well that's that's going, but I last i've heard it was still being developed it's a nice option yeah mm -hmm. that is for sure um thank you middle boss all flip console concern me about flexibility of hinge only original gba have that good retroid flip fail miserable on that uh, i'm trying to understand this uh flip console concerns about clamshells oh yeah that's like well you know concern yeah you get sure. this happening with the retroid flips sometimes now it's a floppy boy mm. and that's hinge quality is very important um we had that going back to the original you know gpdxd line mm -hmm. uh which is my all-time favorite clamshell besides the gba sp uh, it's hinge quality quality is very important i mean yeah it's hard to get it right but like he's saying that the game boy advance is kind of the only one that ever really got it right so right. as long as they're copying that design it shouldn't hey be hey now fine. the pow kitty v90 has an understated like underappreciated hinge it's copying oh, no. the game by my oh, <laughs> and, well true but yeah i think of all yeah. the things i think that's one of those that Amberneck will be able to pull off like yeah. it'll yeah. probably get it right you know just that stupid yeah. logo but anyway yep i know and then <laughs> dweeb i completely <laughs> agree with him I've, I've said this multiple times on the podcast just give us a new v90 <laughs> we need a new v90 I, I thought james said they are doing it we better we better see one come on i feel Palkity. like pal kitty's probably working on like a hundred different things doesn't mean we're gonna see all of them digitizer <laughs> russ what's your favorite cheesecake flavor uh, i don't like cheesecake i don't like cream cheese easy what cream cheese yeah. is delicious. i'm not a huge desserts guy in uh, general you know and right. so um i don't like that texture i don't like uh custard and cheesecake like textures it's kind of you know a little custardy i don't like that that's a weird way to say strawberry cheesecake but okay <laughs> <laughs> uh and jared white yes rgb30 and arcs are still worth it jealous is dead but rock Nix is directly taking its place and continuing on those yeah, chips. The, the so. Arc S doesn't have Rock Neck support. Like only the Retro Arena supports the mm -hmm. RG Arc devices, uh, which go. is kind of a shame. Like I wish there was more people involved in that um, because I think that it could be unlocked uh, pretty cool. Like, you know, just make it a Sega handheld, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but anyway, yeah. That was a weird device because I thought it was great, but there just didn't really seem to be a lot of hype for it, even though yeah. we had some pretty vocal Sega fans that were like, oh, this is amazing. We're finally getting it. But the numbers just really weren't there. Mm. this is a good question for russ and rob really uh, wh what is it like knowing your opinion has an effect what is it like knowing your opinion has an effect on pricing within our niche yeah you know i try to always use that for the power of good where i i'm very um 
conservative about my price estimates when I make a review. I'm mm -hmm. like, this one is $70 right now, but I know it'll go cheaper at some point. But sometimes also when I see something going for really cheap, I don't want to say you're going to be able to find this for $40 because by the time they see it, it might be 50. And so it yeah. is a weird responsibility to have and not something I ever expected. And so you I do try to yeah. be like very conservative and just kind of post like, you know, some sort of average where I think this uh, pricing will be around here, depending on right. where you look. Um, but yeah, sometimes things go up and down and it's, it's really hard to say. I love those comments where like, I can't believe you said this thing's $90. I just found it for 50. I'm like, that is so cool, man. Like, but that's just hindsight, you know? It's well, amazing. yeah. And, and things change. I yeah. mean, if that video came out six months ago, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. prices right. come down, you know, things like that. So that that's the market's always changing constantly. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, just uh, the duo situation with Rob, and then of course, like my situation, <laughs> yes. we posted we posted oh the, the the dang twist and learn today, and no, uh, the pricing was five dollars for this, and now it's not even prime anymore, and it's ten dollars. It's doubled. I feel like I've been bamboozled by corporate. So, you know, one uh, of the cool things I get to do is um, I post my Amazon sales periodically, like every week or so. That's a distributor that I work with where they send me and say, hey, we've got inventory of this thing. We're thinking about this amount of sale. And then I go back and say, price is too high. Like, you know, change it to this or whatever. Yeah. No one's going to buy it at that price. Like I can it, I can make that immediate impact right then and there, which I never have an option to do that. And so we kind of negotiate until we find a thing where I'm like, okay, now it's competitive. Because right. they don't see our market the way that we do, right? And so right. I say, now it's competitive. And then we'll run the sale or whatever. And I'm not, I'm making pennies on the dollar for that kind of stuff. It's not, I'm not making any sort of rich kind of money from that, but it's so super cool to be able to like fight for everybody else and say, now it's going to be competitive. And then they tell me afterwards whether or not it was good on their end, as far as the amount of sales that they were hoping nice. for. So it's kind of fun to like work with that kind of thing. And it's my, I've just started this a couple months ago, but it is pretty cool to kind of fight for the people like that. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that is really cool. Um, Drive that price down on the 2024 from Ann Burnick. I tell you, that's what <laughs> Brian, we need. Yeah. That's what we need. The crazy uh, thing about that, and I think I mentioned it in our group chat, is that they have to ask permission from the manufacturers for the sale price as well. So they right. cannot just like I heard undercut that. everybody and stuff. Mm -hmm. They have to actually get permission to say, the lowest we're allowed to go is this amount. So if you want to be mad at a retailer or whatever, don't. Be mad at Ann Burnick and Pal Kitty or yep. whoever, because they're setting the price. I, yeah. I was going to say, I think everybody yeah. doesn't care about anybody because they're still trying to sell a Win 600 in 2024 yeah, right. for like 400 no, that, bucks. So, right. that's, that's actually a pretty <laughs> common practice with a lot of companies, especially when they're the prime manufacturer. It's a uh, it's map pricing. So they'll, they, they, it, it happens in like supplements, pretty much a lot of industries where the main manufacturer is the one that says like, yeah, you can put this on sale. Cause a lot of times they actually absorb some of the losses for it being on sale. So it's part of the contract. Like, yeah, we're going to give these pretty mm -hmm. cheap, but you can't undercut other people that we're also selling this to by more than X amount. Yeah. Mr. Sujano wants to know, by the way, just from left field here from our DMs, uh, Mr. Sujano wants to know, have you ever accidentally broken a micro SD card when taking the case off a handheld? Once it was the uh, Palkitty A13, you know what that is? That's the arcade one, yeah, like the, the, arcade the clamshell arcade oh, thing, the red thing. Great. That one was notorious for breaking cards, and I I broke mine once. And then I had a guy. This is years and years ago, but a guy wrote me and was like, "Hey, you're like the only guy who made a video about this. I have one, and it doesn't work. Can I just send it to you so you can fix it?" And I'm like, "Sure." And he sent it to me, and sure enough, it just had a broken SD card, and so wow. I just had to put a yeah. new one in. And, and I was like, "You want it back?" <laughs> and he's like, "No." And so I did like a giveaway with it, but um, oh, that's cool. yeah, that was pretty. Fun. Funny. Yeah, that's the only one where I'm, I'm pretty good about taking the card out first now. And also we had uh, Waka, Waka Ryan. I don't make me pronounce things. Waka Renanal. <laughs> Waka Renanal. Yeah, that's all correct. <laughs> wow. What, what can you pronounce? That took a hard turn. <laughs> I don't stop making me pronounce words. Uh, people's can names. I? I'm sorry if I butchered your name, sir. Uh, hey, Russ, can you talk about your tattoo? Love the Japanese style. Hmm. Yeah, so I um, this tattoo is like many years in the making. So essentially, I had an old tattoo up here. Uh, it was like I was in the Navy. I was on a ship and we like pulled into Australia and everyone's like, let's go get tattoos. And so I got one and um, 
It was terrible. And so I got a cover up. This was this big koi right here. Nice. And the guy who did it was like amazing in making the fish part of it. Like the whole thing kind of wraps around the back. But the part that he's covering up, which is this part, you can still see it's kind of gross looking. Um, he, he just botched it. He's like, oh, I'm going to put watermarks there. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he put all these dots and stuff. And then I got done. I got done with it. And I was like, uh, it's, it looks like I have a disease. It looks like I have like polio or something like, you know, oh, no. pox or something. Like it looked like oh. I had a disease. And so I like went, we, we then, and this was here in Hawaii and then we moved to Maryland and then I went to Baltimore. I saw a guy and he did some fixing up on it. And then finally, after that, I found a guy in California who uh, actually studied in Japan and he, uh, he's the one who like fixed up the rest of it. And so he did like all this stuff all around here and everything too. And then we stopped it right around here. And um, that's because at the time in the Navy, you couldn't have a tattoo a showing in uniform. Uh, and so my tattoo used to stop like right around here and then they changed the rule about 10 years ago and so you could get one shown uh and so that's when i went back to that same yeah, guy in california yeah. and then i did all the rest and that's, that's the, the water dragon the, the, i forgot the name of it but yeah never looked up close at your tattoo and i was hanging out with you in person for two weeks now total in the last <laughs> few years i've yet to like look close at your arm and be like what is here so I forget that I even have a tattoo on the arm. I, like I, I see pictures yeah. of myself. I'm like, oh, what's on my Who arm? I'm like, oh, it's a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And how when we were in Japan, this? actually, yeah. someone just mentioned about Yakuza. Like I, when we were in Japan, I had to like not go into onsens, which are like the water, like the hot baths and stuff, because yeah. there were like no tattoos kind of thing. And I yeah. and this is a very like offensive tattoo in the sense that it's Japanese style on top of that, you know. And yeah. so I like I just avoided all that. And I, I covered up my arm most of the time I was in Japan, too. Because you didn't want to upset people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't want to end up in jail. Very polite. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna jail, but, yeah. <laughs> For me, it's all about like, you know, I'm, I'm in their country. I want to be courteous. It's a cultural thing. You know, obviously, That's like cool. it doesn't mean the same thing to me as it does to them. And so I just try and respect their wishes. So yeah. it's all good. Well, good. Uh, and how many languages can you speak? I'm guessing four from. Mm. So I. Maria. Uh, I was trained in Russian initially. So I joined the Navy, went to boot camp, went to language school in Monterey, California. And they said, what language do you want? And I said, I want French. And they said, we don't even teach that. And so I had to pick another language at that point. And so we settled like Russian was like my 10th <laughs> choice, but we settled on that one. Uh, so I, I spent you know two years learning that language um, and then went and worked in it, all that kind of stuff. And then after September 11th, they like expanded the languages that they wanted our language to know. And so yeah. I had the opportunity to learn Indonesian. Uh, so I learned that as well. Uh, the thing is, the Indonesian is a borrowed language essentially from Malaysian from like the 40s when they became independent. And so it's very close. It's like Australian English and American English, like very similar in that regard. Right. So I can test in Malaysian and, you know, there's just a couple words I don't know and that stuff. So I wouldn't say I can speak Malaysian, but I can understand it. And then um, for Russian, like... Once you know Russian and you understand how Slavic languages work, it opens the floodgates for all the others. And so I used to test in other random languages, Ukrainian, Bulgarian, Slovenian, um, because for us, it's like the more you test, the more you get paid and you get more, right. you know, like just promotion points and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, so I tested in a lot of Slavic languages, but I wouldn't be comfortable like being dropped in those countries and trying to like, survive, you know, um, so really just Russian and Indonesian are the ones I was trained in and then I feel comfortable with. And then um, I can speak English pretty well as well. And that's it. That makes one of us. I can speak English you somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that makes one of us. <laughs> Good question. Uh, Troy Boatwright. That's a cool name. Boatwright. Yeah. Question for the panel. Do you guys think wine proton on arm will change things? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Be, that translation layer is spicy. I've been messing around with it on on uh, something, not Linux, but on Mac actually. So, mm. oh something. yeah, there was a there was a push for that recently, right? Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. that's been kind of fun to mess around with. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think like Wine and Proton in general, just on ARM is is a big deal. I, I really would be awesome to see where we go with that. Yeah, I think that that's the next stage. Really, is this like um, translation layer uh, thing? Because because I think that we're getting to the point where the we're we're not going to have developers who are going to be porting things left and right. Instead, we're going to be relying on these good layers to basically 
just brute force it through, you know, yeah. and we're getting such powerful hardware that it'll get to the point that, yeah, we'll be able to just kind of push the way through, even though it's not maybe as efficient as like porting it over natively or whatever. Uh, that's that's going to be the key right mm -hmm. there is to get that trans translation layer. So that seems to be where everything's headed, especially with uh, with the news from Xbox about like potential third party stores on Xbox and getting um, an Xbox handheld and all of that just uh, basically unification of it doesn't it's not going to matter if you're on android on x86 if you're on a home console and all that you're going to be able to play the same games it's going to be pretty cool to see mm -hmm. yeah i mean look, look at what it did for switch emulation it's a perfect kind of a perfect example of that really yeah. where we're not really emulating we're, we're, we're just translating the code essentially mm -hmm. so it's it's done wonders for it. that's why it's progressed so fast mm-hmm and arm is probably the best one to do it on because of the efficiency so if you yeah. really want to yeah. pick up mobile gaming that's where everything's going to go yep for sure um another i, I love that profile great, question. <laughs> great questions tonight <laughs> uh ban wants to know also what are you looking forward to this year uh in terms of handhelds i'm assuming he's asking um I think so. I don't know the ROG Ally Two, whatever they've got cooked up, you know. So yes. uh, I think I'm allowed to say this, but like Asus is coming out with something, and they uh, actually, I'm going to be traveling to their like reveal event. What? And so yeah, so that'll be coming here pretty soon. So that'll be cool. So I'll be there for that. I'll have a, an early video uh, with the rest of them, and so that should be pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a Fisher Price handheld. Yeah. Asus Clamp right. Show confirmed. I knew it would be. I knew it would so I am be. looking forward to that. I want more competition in the x86 space. Uh, and they got so many things right with the ROG Ally and a couple of things wrong. And so they've heard that stuff loud and clear. And so I, I'm just excited to see what they have to say about it. Not sponsored or shilled or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just excited to get a good Windows handheld. I don't care who makes it. I was hoping MSI had something good, but mm -hmm. that kind of happened. But, you know. You just need to address the battery life. That's that's um, the biggest thing for the Ally. Right. You know, I was just talking to Fan the Deck uh, just today, and he said that he was on a flight with his son who was using an ally. He was using a Steam Deck OLED. They both were playing the same game, Bellatro. Mm -hmm. And he was at 76% battery life remaining on his OLED when the ROG ally ran out. Yeah. And so then he plugged in a battery pack <laughs> and then like recharged and then played again. And the OLED, when that one died the second time, the OLED was at 56%. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's crazy. That's a crazy yeah. difference. That's well, that's the thing. That's why the Steam Deck is, it doesn't matter if it's not as powerful as the other ones, because if you can only play plugged into the wall, you might as well just play on your computer. Well, everybody, yeah, the uh, Ally, Ally 2, whatever they're going to call it, uh, you have my attention. So let's get mm -hmm. good battery life. And mm -hmm. I definitely don't need an MSI Claw. Thank you for stopping me from buying another Ally at Best Buy. You know, they have a crazy sale right now, but you don't need it. I don't need it. And uh, there's something new coming unofficially or officially. Is it officially? I mean, it's I don't even it's I have no idea something. what it is. It's, something's okay. happening this year. <laughs> it's going to happen this year. You know? so they already happening. said they're doing an ally, too. Like they it wasn't okay. that an interview. I kind of had this a feeling enough. already from when I saw their product page and it said, you know, ally 2023. And this yeah. was like last year sometime I'm like yeah, yeah this is going to be a yearly thing for sure that they, they already dropped the laptop i'm good with it they already I'm dropped okay the price of the z the regular z1 ally to 399 like yep. and, you, and you can get one for like 299 open box if you look around yep. on best buy so it's that's crazy secretly that's a, a really good budget buy on those are win 600 prices right there yeah <laughs> yeah it's much better for a too. brand new <laughs> ally at best buy like not open right. box something <laughs> brand new that's crazy yeah. Dude, they had open yeah. box ones for down to two hundred and thirty dollars yeah. yesterday. What? It was oh, nuts. She was crazy. crazy. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But I knew there's some reason behind it. They're clearancing out stock of the non-extreme version, which makes sense. And the extreme version, well, that's still seven hundred dollars right now. So I don't know what to say about that. But just wait, everybody. Just, just yeah, wait. right. End of the year. That's gonna be the cap off. Last question from Michael Denny for Chicken Tangine. Are the apricots room temp? Did I say that word right? Tagine. Yeah. Tagine. Okay. Yep. 
Uh, so first of all, Michael Benny is amazing, right? He always comments yeah. here and then also on the Nerd Nest podcast is awesome. And I don't know if he's going to be comfortable with me saying this, but he sent me a Game Gear to review ah. on, on here. So I have his childhood like Game Gear to review, which is amazing. Anyway, uh, so when it comes to oh. chicken tagine, when they're talking about apricots, they're talking about dried apricots. So they are room temperature. You add those basically to add, add like um, like sweetness to the dish. And so, yeah, it, it is room temperature because it's a dried apricot. I'm a hungry Tasty. now. That sounds delicious. I need, yeah, food sounds so good. I have a salmon dinner waiting upstairs. Mm. I'm just considering it. Um, well, good questions, everybody. This was this is a good uh, round table hangout with Russ. We really want to talk about clamshells. We keep saying there's, you know, here's the topic for the episode, and the episode happens, and we go into all sorts of tangents, uh, tangines. <laughs> uh, but for a few moments, for a few minutes, we'll go a little over time. Let's talk about clamshells. So I just want to say, my, we'll just ask everyone's favorite. My favorite, I know the GBASP is a classic, but my favorite is, of course, the GPD. Once again, XD original model. This thing is a classic. Love the that hinge color. is great. The color is awesome. And I still, to this day, use this. And I think it's just one of the best Android devices of all time. Nevertheless, the one of the best clamshells. Not even a dual screen, you know. Um, my favorite dual screen clamshell, the 3DS. I mean, come on, dual IPS mm -hmm. 3DS version. Uh, so good. Uh, I think having that 3D layer is really fun for games like Ocarina of Time and uh, some other. You know, it's a gimmick, sure, but I thought it was well done. So there you go. SP, of course, is up there. And the Pow Kitty V90. Okay, how can I not mention the Pow Kitty freaking V90? <laughs> Every time a child was born in retro handhelds in our community, a v90 was there to greet them to the world so emulation is is built into their dna now funny you should say the 3ds right here this is oh yes this is still not just dual screen but this is still my favorite clamshell handheld period you can just do so much you get full support for 3ds obviously for ds yep. you can emulate a bunch of systems it feels good in the hand it just they Nintendo really got a lot of things right with this one. They really did. You have the XL model there too. That's yeah, the new 3DS XL. Yes. Mm -hmm. See this one, and this one still has like the screen protectors on it, so there's not a scratch on it. I, I love grabbing this thing every now and then, and just you know playing a couple games. You just get an R4 in there, and mm -hmm. you, know, you have any DS game you want. Oh. What about your what about current like emulation clamshells? What's your favorite of those? Um, I don't know. I I might still say the 3DS. You can emulate a pretty okay. good amount of systems. You're not um, gonna say the flip or something. I I thought about the flip, but I don't know. I think I might still go with the 3DS, even though it's not as powerful for emulation. It can it can still handle a lot of games, and mm -hmm. there's just something about it that I really enjoy. The build quality is great. The buttons feel awesome. The flip would be close, but this just this still does it better. In my opinion, that's that's just me. I just I really I I have a soft spot for 3ds's. Well, our writer Joe Joe White on our team here uh, put up an article talking all about his love for the GBASP, and so mm -hmm. I checked it out on our website. But his favorite, yeah, is the GBASP, of course. So it's pretty it's close for me too. Yeah. And I'd say that's the general yeah. consensus for best clamshell because we're seeing every clamshell coming out this year in this exact freaking form factor. Look at him playing baseball there. Um, he listened to Creed. Um, <laughs> read this article. He is the most unhinged reviewer we have on the writing team and uh, uh, just a gentleman. Very well, the, good. The SP was a huge leap for Game Boys in general because you still had full support for all of the Game Boy, Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance. But for the first time, we actually got a backlit screen for Nintendo for one of their handhelds. So, so cool. even though it wasn't the last one we got, if you still want kind of like the ultimate Game Boy experience that sp is probably still the way it. to go yeah. and you can put in a newer ips mod in there and yeah and if you get an r4 card um not an r4 card i'm sorry one of the the everdrive cards there's even some you can even do some emulation on it for like uh game gear and some of those other games oh you're tempting me i don't have an sp right now i have i yeah I've, i i let my friend borrow mine but yeah i love that thing i have an sg 101 uh clear black shell like reshelled one that just it's it's so nice stop it 
Stop. Gonna be do, making a video on that pretty soon. <laughs> that pretty mouth. Spend, uh, I can't. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna make spend, spend like a stop. like a week playing no. nothing but the no. SP and make a video no. on it. Wait until Fisher Price is clamshell. Okay, that's gonna oh be the ultimate. <laughs> that's gonna be the ultimate. We don't need to get involved. You you don't need to go out and spend a bunch of money on on old childhood nostalgia devices. Okay, get a new gen nostalgia device. Rob, that's such a good one too. The Galaxy right? one, man. Did it, yeah, I I'm pretty sure you told you how I got yeah, this one. So. I traded a, a an, an RG five hundred five for this thing. Oh yeah, that, yeah. This is the steal of a century. There's right there. not a scratch on it, and from mm. day one, it's had screen protectors on. Oh man, oh. what yeah. a deal! What a I know. deal! Stop it. I, I even asked the guy. I was like, "Are you sure?" He's like, "I have Stop these it. other." He's like, "No, no, no, that, that one." I was like, "All right, man. If you're sure about this." don't need an sp guys but i okay if i did get it let's say i did let's say i priced it out around 89 dollars to 100 dollars, and uh i got that modding situation that jintaro has got um something similar like that we put some LED, led lighting in we make it very similar to something released by our friends at fisher price um we have a retro stew going i think that'd be really cool you, you can get one of those funky sps or the fun key SP, put a put a fun key yeah. guts inside of it. I almost uh, or, bought one of those. Or, or, or the gotcha, the gotcha close. SP. You know this. God, not a clamshell. Uh, we can make anything into a clamshell if we try hard enough. If anything, the gotcha is making a perfect device worse. I don't need a Game Boy Micro. Everybody, stop it! Stop it! I'm putting my wallet no, you away. Don't need a Game Boy Micro. You don't need it. <laughs> you don't need it. Rob, what's your favorite all-time clam? It's your so favorite clam. Pick one that probably no one has thought about in a very, very long time, and it's actually the Nvidia oh. Shield. Oh <laughs> yes. Yep. His ears are yellowing thing. on the screen. Uh, no, actually, oh. mine's really in great condition. The hinge really? is just rock oh. solid. I mean, yeah. Nice. Ergonomics on the, yeah, the this thing is crazy. I mean, it's just so good. The design of this thing is just absolutely insane russ you ever test one of those i have not but it looks pretty incredible it's yeah, intense really cool. i it's forgot really cool. where i heard this uh but someone was saying that they they, they have a feeling that nvidia is waiting for the switch 2 to come out before they release a new shield because it's kind of time for it i think that would be awesome i would love to finally get my hands the on thing is like i don't that. think they can because i'm i'm sure there's some type of agreement with nintendo that they can no longer make their own mobile device that's gaming related of any kind, basically. Because they stopped true. right oh, from the Switch. True, that's true. Mm -hmm. The minute never the Switch really... came out, they stopped with everything Tegra, everything. basically. Yeah. That yeah, is true. So, so there's definitely something going on there because they had a Shield tablet, they had mm -hmm. the portable, and then, they, of course, they had the TV, which they basically they refreshed it, but then they really it's... have kind of done nothing within the past few years because it's still the best Android TV product right now. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, it's just it'll be interesting to see if they actually do anything with Tegra, yeah. in the future, you know, or whatever it's going to be in the future. Yeah, that is a really nice pick. That's a very Rob pick, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to give a shout out to some of those. Weird oh, yeah. Devices, yeah. You know? is, the, is the Tegra running the, the way the shield running the Tegra X1 chip the same one as the switch? No, no oh, okay. it has a I forgot what the which Tegra it is. I, I want to say four, but I'm probably wrong about that. I think it I think it's uh, maybe older than that, potentially. Okay. Because yeah. they had the tablet that came after the portable as well. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I actually liked when NVIDIA was making hardware like that. I thought that was kind of a fun little period for them. I would have loved to have seen where they would have gone with it, but it is what it is. Thank you, Robert. Robert. <laughs> Tech Daddy. Um, Russ, what's... Hmm. Uh... Tell me about your clams. So I've been thinking about this uh, while you guys are talking. And I think it's the DS Lite, like the original like white oh, DS Lite that I had back in like wow. 2006 or whatever. Because yes. the thing is, I, I have a 3DS. I got a couple of them. Yep. I, I, I don't like its menu. Like I don't, don't like all those like little icons everywhere. And mm -hmm. the thing about 3DS is there's many times where I'm playing it and I've got some pretty good models. I don't think I have like the like super high end IPS ones or whatever. But every time that I play that, I always think to myself, these games look great. Like these games look good, but yeah. they should look better. 
like I think that all the time when I'm playing a 3D, <laughs> like it's just the screen or whatever it is. I'm like, eh, this could be better, you know. Turn I never feel that way about the DS Lite, where I'm just like, this is in its like prime. Ideal, where, yeah. Yeah, like you just you put in your cart and you just start that cart, and it can be a flash cart, you know, it can do all mm -hmm. that stuff as well. Uh, and there are emulators, NDS emulators, right? That can True. be put on mm -hmm. there, so you can run Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. They're not great, but you can do it. And it's got a Game Boy Advance slot, so you can put your Game Boy Advance games in there. Um, yeah. DS Lite is, is the one for me. Actually, I had a friend who just sent me one of hers. Like she was like, I've had this thing forever. And she's like, I, it's still in the box. Do you want it? And it was a blue mm -hmm. DS Lite. And she's handed over immaculate condition. Oh, I'm gonna make a video about nice. that. Nice. And it's it's amazing. And and I get it. Like I can't play any 3DS games on it, but man, sure. I can play just about anything else. And so uh, I've been really enjoying that. And I think that's my clamshell of choice, really. And mm -hmm. it's weird because I've probably played all of them. I got all the X86 ones yeah. and whatnot, you know, and no, I, I really like that DS Lite. A man of culture. Mm -hmm. I I never really spent time with the DS Lite, but I loved my DSi because the DSi was the first one that I, for me, could do mm -hmm. emulation and R4 carts and stuff. And that was so much fun. Uh, but great pick, man. That's We've covered almost the whole gamut. Nobody picked the original DS, which that thing is a chonker. <laughs> It's hard. To, it's it's a hard so sell. ugly too. It's, it's really ugly. ugly. It's so ugly. Yeah. The screens hey, are was, so bad. Yeah. yeah. It was like the Wii U before the Switch. You know, they needed to work out some kinks of the of the new technology, and then they made something better. Hey, let's let's not throw strays at the Wii U. Okay, it's been through <laughs> enough. Okay, fair, fair, fair. <laughs> All right. It's still oh. a great system. Okay. Uh, okay. I still have mine plugged in. I was just going to say for 3DS games, um, the thing with them is to really enjoy them, you kind of have to play them in 3D. Yeah. If they just visually, they look a lot better once you turn that. It doesn't even have to be all the way up, but just turn up the slider. It's, it, it's still running at the same resolution, but for some reason, they just look better, except for some games that are meant to just run without it, like Dragon Quest. Yeah. Uh, was it Dragon Quest 8? That one still looks good, but yeah, I get what you're saying. A lot of 3DS games, if you play them without the 3D effect, they don't they don't look that great. Yeah. Yeah. No hate on the on the Wii U. It's fine. I didn't love it. Doesn't mean I hate it. Just I had good. some great times with my Wii U. I remember Stay. angling like the Stay. Wii U and like a, so that I was pointing towards like my bedroom door so I could still get a signal onto the Wii U <laughs> game pad so I could play in bed. <laughs> that was awesome. I'm pretty sure like the one the test that everybody did was when they went to the bathroom and see if yeah. they could go to the toilet. Yeah. See <laughs> Which that <laughs> it was awesome. That I mean, dream. it was kind of cool. Like the off live man. Is pretty pretty awesome. Hey, for for a while, it was the best way to play Wii games on an HD TV. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And let me tell you, a hacked Wii U is pretty awesome. There's a lot of cool things you can do. Oh with yeah, it. it's it's I've well got, worth. Got one it. in my living room. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do an OLED screen mod, and it's the ultimate. Just get, just get a switch OLED at that point, honestly. Okay. <laughs> all right, there. all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody, this has been a good, a good all-around clamshell choices. I don't have any shade to throw at any of those. Uh, but let's wrap this bad boy up and get out of here onto our evenings. Thank you for joining us once again on this beautiful Monday. It is... Oh, you know what? I need to... Hold on. I need to say something. <laughs> I know that I know that I doubled down on the Fisher Price stuff, you know, and they acquired us and all that. But I, I have to come clean and, and say that that was an April Fool's joke. Mm. No, <laughs> the deception. Yeah, I've going. deceived you all. I had everybody going. RH is not acquired by any, or never will be acquired by any <laughs> conglomerate. Okay, we're staying <laughs> punk rock and we're not going to stop. Uh, so Fisher Price, you can go straight to hell. Actually, there's are really, really quaint toys for your kids. I do recommend them for kids <laughs> and for your babies, hey. and toddlers and stuff. Uh, our affiliate links are in the description, of course, but that's new. You, you almost didn't chill there for a minute. That was amazing. I was yeah, so <laughs> almost made it. <laughs> uh, they're actually. So but as far as, yeah handhelds to play and enjoy it does one thing it has fun lights and learning stuff for kids but it's it's kind of i'm gonna just keep shooting if i keep i talking. had a fisher price car when i was a little kid here. i used to rock uh, that thing everywhere oh my nubs awesome. <laughs> sorry I, I dropped you know what i would love to see as an april fools for next year 
What? What? Is a Stubbs dictionary of all the words that you have invented in the past few years. <laughs> a I am how to pronounce them all. <laughs> I just didn't. I didn't go to that class in school where you learn how to say words correctly. I, people are like, "Oh, you're saying innuendos. You're, you know, you're trying to be funny or something like that." It's like, no, I'm trying i'm sweating bullets trying my hardest hoping to god i'm getting the pronunciation close to the correct <laughs> i'm really sorry what happened last week everybody with the africans language i did not <laughs> i'm very very apologetic about that that was awesome uh, that was Qu awesome Quick sisters oh. i'll never forget to pronounce Quake sisters <laughs> i didn't even pronounce it then uh let's move on with the outro okay and go uh, uh God. <laughs> Some damn screw. This is why Fisher Price won't buy us. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for your <laughs> weekly dose of good time, fun, and news from your friends over at Retro Handhelds. Um, and thanks to all of our patrons and subs. We couldn't do any of this without you. Perks with us start for as little as three dollars a month. And you can find us in uh, in Patreon or uh, YouTube or, of course, in Discord as well. So I don't know where in the hell my notes went. I'm really a mess this episode, guys. <laughs> Just take it easy on me. Here it is. <laughs> uh, don't, uh, good. Don't forget to check out our other videos and join us on our Discord to chat and play games and join us for next week where we're actually going to have zoo of zoo reviews i believe oh, no. he's gonna be here live in oh, studio man. oh this is gonna be from, uh, interesting from his house and uh, that'll be good and then we're gonna have van and mikhailov from team retro on april 15th that's gonna be fun and then join us at the end of the month we're gonna have tech dweeb and i believe that is monday april 29th so that's very very exciting tech dweeb is his mom said he can come over again and, and play and hang out with us so we're going to have some root beers and chill. And don't forget to check out our guest, Russ, with his glorious hair from Richard Game Corps. <laughs> check out his videos. He's our buddy, and we're glad that uh, you joined us for another one, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. This is fun. <laughs> we're going to we'll, we'll do it again this year. We'll, we'll get into some more shenanigans. Uh, check out Rob, of course, Rob's channel. All these shill, 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 shill our friends. There we go. Uh, <laughs> as As always... This has been Stubbs. I'm going to put myself back in first here. This has been Stubbs on behalf of Rob Aish and Russ. Take care of those handhelds. Bye, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye.